L listen, 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 hear me out. I know what you're thinking. Lego Incredibles? You choose possibly the most rushed Lego game to date as the next every character ranked? What about Lego Lord of the Rings or Lego Harry Potter or Lego Marvel superheroes? Well, uh, no, no, and no. At, at least not yet. I'll get there. Uh, I chose Lego Incredibles because I completed it 100% before all the rest. And I mean like 100% complete with all collectibles, all characters, the whole shebang. And I gotta say, the game was sloppy. It took me a grand total of 15 hours according to the end game clock, but my Switch said I had been playing for 20 hours or more. That means that at least 5 hours was dedicated to loading screens. And yeah, I felt the 5 hours. Don't get me wrong, it was painful. And I really did deal with it for the completion. There's somehow a total of 119 characters in this game. Excluding custom characters and including the one DLC and I sure am shocked how many characters there are considering How little there is to do in this game. There are six levels for each of the Incredibles movies ten crime waves Which are just like small like busy work Submissions to carry out with an occasional boss fight and then all of the open world collectibles and That's not a lot at all Lego Incredibles had a lot of potential, with the inclusion of other Pixar movies. There is some Pixar representation in this game, but we'll get to it later. TT Games couldn't seem to bother with adding any bonus levels for other Pixar movies, which they totally could and should have done. I guess they were too quick to abandon this game to work on Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. I guess we'll never know. But what I do know is that I will spend my next 12 videos ranking all of the characters in this game from worst to best. What I can appreciate from later LEGO games, and superhero LEGO games like this one in particular, is that there is a lot of versatility and an ample amount of abilities. Characters can have one, two, three, or more different things they can do. In this game, the most abilities a character can have is seven, and that's actually kinda cool. But for this series, the same rules apply. Those rules being one, no custom characters, and two, my judgment reigns supreme over any other authority. So, with that in mind, let's jump into ranking the characters of this waste of potential LEGO Incredibles. Yes, let's start with the most beloved character in the Incredibles. What, what, you don't mean you don't know Tommy? The well-known chauffeur of Winston Dever? Yeah, that's who he is. I don't know what prompted the de developers of this game to think. Yeah, we need a chauffeur of a B-list character in the second movie. I know I tooted this game's horn a bit a minute ago for the amount of abilities, but not one. Not one was given to Tommy Boy here. Some characters were really stretched to have some abilities, and I'll get to those when I do, so it's a little disappointing to see that they didn't even do that to my favorite character so far in this list. Fortunately, there are only four characters in this game with no abilities, and we'll cover all of them in this part. Unlike LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, where the whole first part and, and a half were dedicated to useless characters. Ugh. It was pretty hard choosing who should be last, Tommy or Helicopter Pilot. On one hand, Tommy has a name, meaning that more thought was put into him than the Helicopter Pilot by default. Had the Helicopter Pilot been named Dave or something, then the Helicopter Pilot would be at the same level of depth. However, I ultimately decided that the helicopter pilot should be ranked higher than Tommy because, well, it takes more effort to become a helicopter pilot than a limousine driver, you know? Even if the helicopter pilot has no name, his willpower more than makes up for it. Again, the developers definitely could have stretched to give this guy at least one ability. I'd name them off, but I'd rather wait to talk about abilities when we come across them with a character who actually has it, so maybe we can put a pin in this discussion, come back to it when we're ready. Another classic character, the Chad Brentley. This was the anchor at the KQRY news station that interviewed Elastigirl in The Incredibles 2. He also ended up being hypnotized by the screen slaver. So uh, this guy is a chump. Yes, that's my my that's my official analysis. Anyway, just like Tommy and Helicopter Pilot, Chad Brentley can't do jack. I mean, 
He's a journalist, so what do you expect? Hey oh, pound it. That was a good one. The youth like it when I slam the media, right? I've got to appeal to my main target audience. Is, is it working? So, sorry, I'll, I'll stay on topic. Look at this dude. Why are his eyes so disproportionate to the rest of his body? It's bothering me. So, someone fix it. Okay, well, it's better, but not by much. How about, how about, okay, hear me out here. Taking away the eyes entirely. Uh, you know, you know, fuck it. I'll take that. I'll take that. Let's just, let's just move on. Yeah, I'm feeling the burn, but not the burn you think. Crop here is deserving of the title of best useless character, and frankly, he beats all the characters we've covered thus far. That's what it means, best of the useless. Why is why is that? Well, do you know who this guy is? The the coincidence, I think, not guy from the first Incredibles film. This guy ascended the movie he originated in and reached meme him. For that alone, he gets to be the best of the worst. Considering some of the outlandish characters that are in this game, I would definitely would have been down for just another variant of Bernie Crop. This guy is everything I'd want to be. Man, what a great guy. I totally have more things to say about him, and I'm totally not stretching for time. However, instead of telling you about the things I have to say about Bernie Crop from the hit Pixar film The Incredibles, I will instead leave you wondering why I wouldn't talk about him more. So we're out of the characters with no abilities, and this is a special case where the character has an ability, but it's honestly not one I consider to be useful at all. Um, I racked my brain for a place in the open world to showcase this specific ability, but I couldn't find one. But let's touch on that later. Let me discuss one of the coolest and strangest decisions for a character in this game. This is also the first Pixar character, not from The Incredibles, or any Pixar film for that matter. Well, I guess you could argue he's in every Pixar movie because he's in the goddamn Pixar logo sequence thingy. Anyhow, in this game, there are a plethora of Pixar builds, which constructs the, a building or structure uh, that's from another Pixar film that's not Incredibles 1 or Incred Incredibles 2. Uh, these are similar to the many incredible builds you see in the open world, but these are different colors and stuff, and each Pixar build unlocks a character, and usually you have to use that character to interact with the Pixar build so you can receive the red brick that's associated with that area. In all honesty, it was a fun way to collect red bricks along with characters you wouldn't expect to see in an Incredibles game. I could argue that this wa way of getting red bricks beats the method used in any past LEGO game. I know it's quite a claim, especially for LEGO Incredibles, but I, that's what I believe to be true. But Junior's Pixar build is built a giant ass lamp with a ball, which is totally something not out of the left field. It's a callback to the Pixar short Luxo Junior, dating all the way back to 1986. Yes, Pixar goes back far, but their animation then was uh, questionable. Anyway, Luxo Junior was a landmark event for the company, and Junior definitely deserves a spot here. His idle animations have him pull out the ball and jump on it, deflate it, and then look out into the distance like he does in the Pixar logo. He bounces around and is amusing to play as, even if he can't do much. Oh, that I almost forgot about his useless ability. He has the Illuminate ability. This ability is fairly common in new LEGO games, where you entered a darkened area and the character with the ability will light up. I don't think it's used at all in this game, making the ability kind of worthless. But we have seen it in past LEGO games before. You, you actually, you do probably use it once or twice, but uh, and maybe in like a level. But it's just escaping my mind. This segment is getting long, so I'm just gonna say this to wrap it up. I respect Junior's place in the roster, and it's cool that they put him in. But the one ability he has isn't even useful, so that's why he's stuck this law on the list. I didn't expect for that junior segment to last so long but he's an important part of Pixar history and should be treated as such but now let's move on to a less important but more useful character but only by a smidge the Municiburg mayor the M Municiburg is the city we see in Incredibles 2 and this is the guy that presented the hover train got in and was like oh it's going the wrong way we are screwed he's, e he's easily spooked I guess and that's why he has the sonar ability out of the Lego games covered on this channel we've seen the ability in both Lego Indiana Jones and Lego Batman, so this isn't new. But in case you're new to the channel, sonar is the ability to shatter glass pieces. 
uh, again, it's not an ability used often, but it's still more than illuminate. You can also stun enemies for a moment, but enemies aren't really trouble enough to, to bother with doing that. Here's the first of many supers you probably have never heard of unless you paid extreme attention to the movie. Vectress was one of the supers that fell into the same trap as Mr. Incredible and paid for it with her life. Honestly though, I'm not surprised she was lost to an Omnidroid. Her only power is that she can scream loud. In case you haven't guessed, Vectress has the same one ability as the Municipal Mayor, Sonar. Uh, she screams and that's about it. But what is that going to do to an Omnidroid? She probably was stomped in like 2 seconds. At least Mr. Incredible could withstand the power of an Omnidroid with his super strength. On one hand, it's cool learning about these random supers that had lived in the Incredibles universe, but on the other hand, I have no attachment to these characters and I ultimately just forget about them. That's the problem with the roster in this game. Yeah, a common bank robber beats out Vectress, a verified super, but really, you see these bank robbers absolutely everywhere. When you 100% complete the game, the only thing you can really do in the open world is just f fight these guys and chase them around. Sometimes bank robbers spawn in groups of three and you just pound them for standing around. They don't do anything. You just you just walk up and you just beat them. It's senseless. Or you may have to chase them and return the money they stole from, to a citizen. To unlock this character, you would have to do it 10 times. Is Bank Robber worth the trouble? Well, for one, yes, if you want to 100% complete the game, it's required. But as for his one ability, he has Grapple. The Grapple ability is not new to LEGO games, but it wasn't in any LEGO game covered on this channel. Well, LEGO Batman had Grapple, but in that game, it was, way, it was a way to move to different elevations. In this game, Grapple is used to pull things down, open, or what have you. Grapple is used a lot in this game because one of the main characters have it and they play a role in a lot of the levels. So yeah, Bank Robber has a useful ability, but there are many other characters who have Grapple alongside other abilities as well, making this guy kind of obsolete. To finish off the first part of this long series, we see a villainous fiend in his true form. A man with a skin tight mask thing that doesn't cover his face. I don't know what you call those, but yeah, it's the casual Nomanasan Island Guard. I'm not sure why merely taking off your sunglasses makes you casual, but uh, when you keep that uncomfortable skin tight suit on, in fact, wouldn't sunglasses make you more casual because like you're cool? I don't know, what do I know? This guy also only has a grapple ability which puzzles me of all things grapple i don't know because if you can't guess the casual distinction on his name implies that there are multiple variants of this guy and one of these variants has another better ability and if these two characters are essentially the same but in different outfits i just feel like you should give them the same abilities but whatever whatever man To start off part 2, let's take the character we ended on in the last part and just add some sunglasses. There we go, that's better and not as casual. It's the gray Nomanasan Island Guard, everybody. Even though the casual Nomanasan Island Guard was also gray, but hey, he's casual. In case you haven't guessed, the gray Nomanasan Island Guard also has the grapple ability and nothing else. Honestly, I don't know how they're doing much good with nothing but grappling guns, unless they're using the grappling guns to like pull organs out of their targets. I'd, but you can't do that in this game, because this is a PG rated franchise, and also LEGO minifigures don't have organs to begin with. It's kind of weird how the developers were so desperate to get more characters in the roster, they were like, uh, you see gray, the gray island guard, uh, let's just take off his visor, call him the casual island guard, and that'll be a new character. Whoever made that decision should be fired, and I should be given whatever job that, that they had. TT Games, if you're watching, get on that. Dude, I know, like, what the hell, TT <laughs> Games, you know you're stretching the characters when you put in a guy that is literally a zombie-esque man in a corn costume, who would, like, obviously, goes without saying, had nothing to do with The Incredibles to begin with, but, let me say, he has an ability that is new to the series, so that's gotta count for something. 
Well, he has the sharpshoot ability. Now, sharpshoot is a fairly common ability in which you target an enemy or an object or in, or in launch something at it to hit it from afar. But there are two different types of sharpshoot, and the corncob monster, I can't believe I have to refer to him as that, has the worst of the two types of sharpshoot. The better type, I'll get to it when we get to a character who has it, but let me tell you how this sharpshoot works. Basically, in a nutshell, when you throw the thing, which in corn cob monsters case is a husk of corn, your target will probably be gone to like the next county by the time your object gets there. So assuming it's a moving target, but like seriously, it's, ugh, it's so useless. Oh yeah. Corn Cob Monster is not the only food themed character in this game. Next up we have Banana Suit Guy. We all remember this memorable character from the Incredibles movies and he takes his rightful place here. Banana Suit Guy has the same abilities as the Corn Cob Monster which is the slow and pretty useless sharpshoot but still sharpshoot nonetheless. Instead of the corn that the Corn Cob Monster had, the Banana Suit Guy has bananas if that isn't obvious enough. You may wonder how you go about unlocking these guys. Well, for most characters, you unlock them by completing levels, getting the mini kits, uh, completing crime waves, etc. But there are quote unquote challenges in the open world that you can complete that will unlock a character for you. In Banana Suit Guy's case, you have to destroy 10 garbage cans in the residential district of the open world, and then you unlock this guy for purchase. It all feels redundant because these challenges are just ploys to stretch playtime and they just re reward you with the character you'd never play. I know you guys are all so ecstatic to hear about yet another food based character in the roster. L let me assure you, this is the last one. As you probably expect, Hot Dog Guy has the same ability as Corn Cob Monster and Banana Suit Guy, which is the crappy sharpshoot ability. and as you can probably guess, he throws hot dogs. Since hot dog guy, banana suit guy, and corn cob monster are all the same, it was difficult to decide who is better than who, since they're practically identical. But my reason for placing hot dog guy as the best of the three harkens back to the Lego minifigure counterparts. Lego hot dog guy was one of the minifigures in the Lego minifigure series 13 line. Hot dog guy was the first minifigure in a minifigure blind bag history that was a person in a food based costume. They've had a food based minifigure in almost every minifigure series since then. So since Hot Dog Guy set the bar, I think he should be the top. Yes, in a world full of superpowered beings, of course you'd want to be playing as the police officer. Hey, to be fair, they do protect our community, just notably less than supers. Basically, they'll drag the unconscious body of the villain after the super beat them to a pulp. Okay, I'm done ragging on the police officer. What does he have that makes him better than the the hot dog guy? Well, he, he actually somewhat deserves his place in the roster, and he also isn't embarrassing himself by wearing a hot dog suit. But other than that, the police officer also has sharpshoot. But this time, it's the sharpshoot that you would want. Since the police officer has a gun, it would make sense that the bullet would make to its target in a timely manner, correct? Well, it does get there in a timely manner, and I'm living for it. And Okay, well, not really, but it's nice to see that the sharpshoot ability is living up to its name. Because it gets there faster than a hot dog would. Next up, we have the police sergeant. The police sergeant plays pretty much exactly like the police officer I just went over. She has sharpshoot, the good kind of sharpshoot, and that's about it. But why did I rank the police sergeant over the police officer? Well, it's quite obvious, really. The police sergeant is the police officer's superior. It's that simple. You unlock the police sergeant in another challenge where you have to destroy five ATMs in the financial district. If you haven't played this game, the open world is separated into like different chunks, each a different district of a municipal or a new urban. So the financial district is this part on the map. I find it interesting that they made the police sergeant a woman, mostly because gender norms usually don't allow for that sort of thing. But that's a slippery slope I'm not going to go down, so all I'm going to say about it is nice to see TT Games being progressive in a LEGO game. This dude is the type of guy who would protect an ambassador or something. Oh, wait, that's what he does? 
Everything makes sense now. Since this guy has sharpshoot and nothing else, let me tell you about his role in the levels you see him in. So in Incredibles 2, Screen Slaver targets the Ambassador and Elastigirl has to protect her. Basically spitting in the face of these here Ambassador security guards. In the second half of the Revelations level, the game recreates the helicopter scene with the largest helicopter known to man. Like, look, I know it's this big to keep you busy doing things in the level, but goddamn, that's a huge and chunky helicopter. Look at that. That's ridiculous. In the level, the Screen Slaver possesses the Ambassador's security guards, and instead of having them go directly to the Ambassador to kill her, they stand around and wait for Elastigirl, which Screen Slaver must know they have no chance against. But yeah, Sharpshooting Ambassador, Security Guard, there you are. So here's the third and final Nomanison Island Guard on the list, and he's above the casual and gray Nomanison Island Guards for a few reasons, which will become apparent. One, he's blue. Okay, that makes him look cooler than the boring gray guys. Two, he has sharpshoot instead of grapple, which makes him more interesting to play as. I, I don't know why the gray and casual Nomanison Island Guards have grapple. It's a very odd ability to give up random enemy characters, but the sharpshoot on the blue Nomanison Island Guard makes sense because, well, you see them as enemies and levels with guns. It's only right that they have them when you unlock them as playable characters. Then again, though, this is the section of the series where it's the characters no one will play as since there are obviously better characters to bother with. Unfortunately, this guy is plopped in that category. It's fine, though. He knows his place in society, and his place is at rock bottom. Um, actually, not quite the bottom, but pretty close. Like, pretty close. Mine as well. Like, a step down would be rock bottom. Remember this buffoon of a man? The dude who wanted Supers back so bad that he couldn't realize the evil doings of his sister? What am I doing? Doofing on this guy? There's nothing really wrong with him as a character, I guess, but I don't know. This dude just was just such a redundant character in Incredibles 2. Yeah, he got the ball rolling, but whatever. Winston never has a sharpshoot in this game, which makes sense, I guess. I suppose you should probably make him useful somehow, since he's somewhat an important character in Incredibles 2. Maybe because his father, who called on supers to help him when burglars were breaking into his house, when the calling the police would have been more sensible, since supers were illegal at that point. Remember the ambassador security guard? Well, this is the person he's guarding. Securely. The ambassador has one ability, and it's one we haven't seen yet. The ambassador has the hacker ability. Throughout the game, there are these terminals that only certain characters can access, and it contains this little minigame that I'm not even tempted to call a puzzle. It's te it technically is, but like not really. There's an extra that you can obtain called Fast Interact that basically skips this whole hacker puzzle, so that's why you don't really see it in the footage that I have. Anyway, the hacker terminal is seen pretty often, especially since one of the members of the Incredible Family has it. Uh, so I don't know why the Ambassador has it. Mayhaps it's a reference to how she's a slimy and secretive politician, as all politicians are, and like how they're reptiles. Well, the Ambassador definitely doesn't look the part, but it's always who you least expect. In TT Games' desperate endeavor to fill up their LEGO Incredibles roster comes this little boy right here, Rusty McAllister. In case you don't realize who this character is, which I don't blame you if you, if you don't, uh, it's the kid that witnessed Bob Parr lift his car in frustration, which in fairness is one of the classic scenes from The Incredibles, so I guess he deserves a spot in the roster? Well, what does Rusty McAllister do exactly? Well, he has one ability, and it's one we haven't we have yet to cover in this series, but you have definitely seen it on this channel before. The crawl hatch ability, you know, for the small boys. On this channel, we've seen it in both LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga and LEGO Ann Jones The Original Adventures, not to mention the several other LEGO games it appears in. So yeah, it's not a new thing. However, the crawl hatch ability is used pretty frequently since two of the five members of the Incredible Family can use it, but we'll get to that another time. And so we've made it out of the triple digits and into the double digits, and Gilbert Huff gets the honor of being the first character we cover. G 
Gilbert Huff was Bob Parr's boss at the beginning of The Incredibles, who deservedly got thrown through five cubicles after being after completely humiliating Bob in his office. There isn't too much left to say about this character beyond what I just told you, so let's get into what he does in this game. Uh, uh Crawl Hatch Boy, that, and that's it. So basically, he's exactly like Rusty McAllister. I place Gilbert Huff above Rusty McAllister, though, because Gilbert Huff has more than one line of dialogue. In fact, the scene where Gilbert Huff berates Bob Parr actually contributes to a, to the world building uh, of the Incredibles and the character of Bob Parr himself. But blech, you know, you know, I've run out of things to say when I when I try to get deep with with certain scenes in the movie and analyzing them and stuff. Listen, guys, I wish I had to say and who ended up in the roster for this game. Okay, but believe it or not, TT Games did not even think to consult me about anything in this game when they should have. And that actually explains a lot of things for the, uh, that that happened in this game. And that's why Old Lady is in this game. Funnily enough, she has a new ability not yet seen in the list of her, and it's an ability that was introduced in the first LEGO Batman. Back then, it was known as drone access, but now it's called ro remote control. Basically, old lady can summon one of her cats, and you can run around as the little critter. The cat itself can't do much besides run around. However, there are little tunnels that the that you can find that the little cat or whatever the thing is you're controlling can enter. These little tunnels can get you a mini kit or a red brick or what have you. So yeah, I can understand old lady having a cat as her minion that does whatever she wishes. Oh, we've hit another Pixar character not from The Incredibles. Glad to see it. This time, we have Linguini one of, from one of my favorite Pixar films aside from The Incredibles, Ratatouille. Ratatouille, what, whatever, okay. You unlock him in one of the several Pixar builds in the game uh, that you unlock in the uh, open world. The Pixar build to unlock Linguini is uh, Gustavo's, the restaurant featured in Ratatouille. Linguini's ability is very well warranted, and actually incorporates the real main character of the film, Remy. Yes, Linguini has a remote control ability, with Remy as the animal you take control of. With each Pixar build, there is a red brick, and you have to use the Pixar character you unlock in order to get it. In this case, you have to take control of Remy and traverse through a small tunnel in Gustavo's kitchen to pop that little, little red brick out. The red brick unlocked from Gustavo's is the the times eight studs red brick, so you can bet your bottom dollar I'd gladly take that for the stud boost. Wow, two non Incredibles Pixar characters in a row. Well, yeah, I guess. Next up is Dory from Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. I think Dory is probably the best possible representative for the Finding Nemo films, especially since. Her big involvement in the first, and her being the namesake of the second one. How they handled her in this game was pretty weird though. It's probably the weirdest out of any character in this game. As you can see, Dory is this tiny little blue model. It's not even an actual Lego piece. It's just a cartoony, uh, like, just re uh, render of Dory. But she's surrounded in an aura of water that acts as a, like a hamster ball of sorts. Her attack is just a little burst forward that apparently hurts enemies. Uh, her one ability is Dive, which is new to the series, and as you can imagine, it's a, an ability that allows you to go underwater. Most characters can only swim on the surface of water, but a select few characters like Dory can not only explore the depths of the water surrounding the open world, but they can move pretty fast. There are races underwater that Dory is perfect for, along with collectibles that you can probably use. Probably the weirdest super you actually see in the Incredibles movies, for sure. His tagline, which he said in Incredibles 2, really stuck with me. Superpower or medical condition? You decide. Reflex is an old man whose power is to throw up acid vomit. It's pretty disgusting. You actually play Reflex in the campaign, weirdly enough. In Incredibles 2, Elastigirl has an adventure basically on her own, but as we all know, LEGO games require at least two characters at any given time for co-op's sake. So TT Games decided to throw in one of these random supers you see Winston Dever introduced to Elastigirl early on in the movie, who later become villains because of Evelyn Dever's mind-controlling goggles. 
Anywho, Reflex was the one chosen for the Elastigirl on the case level, where she catches the fake screen slaver. Reflex's uh, unique power was translated to this game as the laser ability, which we haven't covered yet. Laser, which is new to the channel, but not at all new to LEGO games, is the ability to break golden LEGO pieces by providing a consistent laser that heats it up. Reflex's laser ability, uh, I use that loosely it, because it's not a laser, it's a vomit. It comes from his mouth, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it's become a staple ability in LEGO games and it has always been used a ton in every game it shows up in. So even if Reflex only has the laser ability, it still makes him somewhat useful since, since you'll be seeing a lot of gold pieces. This is another one of the several supers that you barely see for like one frame in Incredibles 2. She was there on the boat for the legalization of supers and uh... I'll just say she looks much more flattering in LEGO form. Anyway, Firebreak's ability in this game is actually very misleading. Well, her one ability, yeah just one. Wouldn't you think that by her name her one ability would be, I don't know, fire related? Wrong. She can fly. That's it. I don't even want to fathom the thinking behind this decision, so let's just go with it. Firebreak was actually the first character I unlocked that had the fight ability, so yeah, she has a special place in my heart in this game, since the flight ability instantly makes getting open world collectibles miles easier, since you can travel around the map a lot faster. But once I got other characters that can fly along with more abilities, Firebreak uh, got, the, got, got the cold shoulder, to say the least. Wowee, this is the third non-Incredibles Pixar character in this part alone. Either I'm too eager to cover these guys, or they're just not very useful. <sighs> I kid, only most of them suck. These Pixar build characters are in the game half for novelty, and half to fill up the roster. However, uh, next up we have Bing Bong from Inside Out. This is the first character on the list with two abilities, but one of them is the most useless ability in the game, so technically he only has one. The useless ability is Illuminate, as we covered in the Junior segment. The other new ability Bing Bong has is the Colin ability. Basically, the Colin ability is the ability to spawn a vehicle, animal, or what have you in order to like ride it. This is best used for the open world and moving faster for activities such as races. Bing Bong can call in a rocket wagon, something that he and Riley, the girl from Inside Out, rode together, I guess. Next up we have this girl, which I have nothing to go off of. Obviously she wasn't in the movies at all. In the game though, she owned the ice cream parlor, which was taken over by a villain in the first crime wave in the game. You unlock her by busting up 10 ice cream stands in the city. For her abilities, she has two. The first is Sharpshoot, an easy ability to give almost any character. However, this Sharpshoot is the sucky one. Uh, she just throws ice cream cones, and but then again, it it's really slow and not worth your time at all. The other ability is Agility. Agility is actually a pretty useful ability because you see it a lot. Basically, if you see poles sticking out of buildings or structures, characters with agility can swing on them and get to higher places. A lot of the women characters have it, and so does Sally Sunday. Hold on, lore alert, lore alert. Bang the pans, pots and pans, lore alert, oh my god. Apparently, Sally Sunday is the twin sister of Shelly Sunday, who went missing after playing with experimental ice cream. I wonder what that, who that is. Perhaps we'll see them later on the list. Ooh, foreshadowing. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. L listen man, Pixar didn't realize the hilarity of his last name because it wasn't as big of a slang word as it is now, but what can I say? It's, it's, I mean, not much we can do about that. Anyway, Rick Dicker has two abilities, and let me tell you, they're plenty better than what Sally Sunday has to offer. First off is Sharpshoot, but the good kind. I mean, this guy is packing some heat, and I'm not referring to his last name. He's got a gun, okay? He won't mess you up. The second ability is Hacker, which is something we have 
covered before, so I won't go too much into it. But here's another gripe that I have with this game, and Rick Dicker here is a good example of it. This guy does not look like his movie counterpart at all. There's a clear disconnect between the look of LEGO and Pixar animation st like style. I'm, I mean, one of Rick Dicker's defining feature is his monster nose. Like, it's like, what, what the hell? You need to get like surgery on that, right? But alas, most LEGO figures do not have noses. So Rick Dicker is stuck looking like an, yet another boring old CIA agent man. Ah uh, yes, another random super no one has ever had an ounce of care for. Hey everyone, it's Zephyr. In case you're an uncultured piece of rat who, who's unfamiliar with Greek mythology, Zephyr was also the name of the god of the west wind. But specifically, specifically the one that flows west. Don't get it confused. There are actually like four gods of winds and they're all like super different. Zephyr was also actually was the calmest of the four, usually associated with the summer breeze. So naturally... This super has the ability of airbending. So how does airbending translate to this game in particular? Extinguish. Yeah, no pause for suspense, that's the answer. You can extinguish fires with it. It's a little weird to me, but yeah, what can you do? The only ability Zephyr has other than extinguish is sharpshoot, which in the good kind. She she can put out fires and shoot air balls out of her hand. You would think she'd have the flight ability since she's named after a Greek god that was in charge of the wind, sorry, west wind, west wind, sorry, my mistake. But, like, she, why can't she use the wind to, like, float? I don't know. Remember the slime of a lady from the original Incredibles movie? I've been interested in her fate after the events of The Incredibles and Incredibles 2, I guess, since they happen one after the other. The last time you see her, she helps The Incredibles escape Nomanison Island, but even the wiki says she has no confirmed fate in canon. Rick Dicker says that Syndrome's assets were frozen after he died, so Mirage is suspected to have been arrested, but like, whatever happened to Nomanison Island? Did Syndrome own it outright, or does its ownership go to someone else? Anyway, Mirage in this game does not translate well into Lego. Uh, that can be said for sure. It's a, it's most definitely a Rick Dicker situation, where the, like the the Pixar animation style and the Lego just do not fuse well at all. Also, for abilities, she is a hacker, and she has a gun for sharpshoot. Both abilities we have seen before, but these abilities are pretty useful, so she deserves her ranking over everyone else in the list so far. Wow, we're picking through these non-incredibles Pixar characters quick. What is this, the fifth one? Next up is Miguel from Coco. Miguel has two abilities, and both are pretty justified. The first is Crawl Hatch. This is obvious because he's a small boy. He can fit through those hatches. It's what, you know. Um, the second is Sonar. Coco is a very musical movie, so Miguel being able to break glass with noise is fitting, I guess. I, isn't that kind of insulting, though? Because, like, it's... It, they're, they're basically saying that Miguel's guitar playing is like senseless noise that does nothing but shatter glass. Miguel's sonar is different than most characters with sonar because all other sonar characters just scream. But like I said, Miguel uses his guitar to produce the noise for sonar. Wow, remember this guy? Of course you do. The guy that asked Violet out on a date at the end of The Incredibles only to have his memory erased by Rick Dicker for seeing Violet in, like, super mode. He's also relatively high on the list, outranking some supers. And Remy? Let's just discuss his abilities. The obvious one, Sonar. Tony Reidinger is a little baby and screamed and ran away from Violet when he saw her with powers, so it makes sense that he screams very loudly. The second one is a itty-bitty puzzling to me. The, the Tony's second ability is agility, so not one only can he break glass but he can do epic parkour uh, so he is basically Miguel if you replace Miguel's crawl hatch with agility I don't know the, the reasoning for giving him the agility ability I guess that makes him a cool cat I don't know but he is involved in the restaurant scene in Incredibles 2 which is which is a, a classic <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes, the babysitter of Jack Jack in the or original Incredibles movie. She obviously deserves her spot in the roster, even though she they don't show her at all in the campaign. I guess it makes sense since the plots of movies adapted in the live games are kind of chopped up to avoid cutscenes being too long, even though the cutscenes in this game are still a bit long. So a Lego ad adaptation of Carrie McKean looking after Jack Jack was probably cut from the final product. However, she does have some abilities, and I can confirm she has the exact same abilities as Tody Ridinger. Agility and Sonar. For Carrie, it makes sense. I mean, she is a teenage girl, but why would I w rank Carrie McKean over Tony Radinger? Well, Carrie McKean is likable in an annoying way. Like, you can't hate on this innocent girl. Tony, however, blew Violet off for being a super and got his memory erased by Rick Dicker for it. One of the more peculiar supers in the sense that he barely qualifies. This dude's power is to have a grappling hook, and that's it. And I know there are superheroes with no powers, one big one being Batman and also Iron Man, but this is the Incredibles universe. I think the rules for what qualifies as a superhero are different. More specifically, what qualifies as a super. Uh, I mean, Buddy was rejected by Mr. Incredible, mostly for being a dumbass, but I bet the fact that he had no powers contributed too. I mean, Buddy definitely would have been blown to pieces from that bomb bo voyage bomb if it wasn't for Mr. Incredible. But I bet if it was Mr. Incredible with a bomb on his butt, he'd be able to eat that hit. So yeah, Cliffhanger may just be a wannabe super along with Syndrome. But let's get to how he fares in this game. He has two abilities of note. The first is agility, so he can swing on poles and stuff. And his other ability, if you can guess from from I literally said it earlier he has grapple he's grapple that's what he has not very impressive in the super community unless he is an absolute god with that grappling hook what screenslaver without his trusty gang of goons that's right the goons have been transferred from Lego Batman to this modern uh, the, uh, passable game these goons don't look like the Batman goons at all, so I guess they're, they're siblings of the goon quintuplets as opposed to being, you know, like replicas. I don't know, but I don't recall the screenslaver having any goons. I mean, I suppose the pizza guy who was framed for being screenslaver and the brainwashed supers could be considered goons of the screenslaver. But that's not, that's definitely not whatever this guy is. Anyway, let's get to the abilities. One is something we've seen a few times in the last few segments. Agility. I don't really get the reasoning for it, but what do I know? The other ability this guy has is the hacker ability, which I, I guess I can understand. But if this guy is just a brainwashed guy, was he able to hack before he donned the screensaver glasses? You know what? Let's just move on. This guy was literally only in the game because the levels need an enemy for you to destroy. If you haven't played this game, you're probably confused, with good reason. In a game full of superpowered beings, why put in a firefighter? Well, it's another one of those challenging situations. Get it? Challenging, because you, you get her from a challenge, and I said challenge. Forget it. This is why I get when I try to make a joke. Anyway, in the open world, there are fires that you have to put out. By putting out each fire, you unlock this lady. Let's just get the fact that she has agility out of the way, like the last, like, what, five people on this list? The other ability the firefighter has is a bit obvious. Um, what do firefighters do? Oh, they fight fires, right? Uh, the, the firefighter has an extinguisher to extinguish said fires. So by process of elimination, okay, not okay, can't be flight. Nope. Um, uh, do you, nope, not laser. Uh, you can't dig with an extinguisher. Uh, the firefighter must have the extinguish ability. Great job, everyone. We cracked the code. Too bad most instances you need to use the extinguish ability for had already been done by the time you unlock her. I mean, you have to extinguish fires to unlock her, but when you unlock her, the fires are already extinguished, so what's the point? Ooh, baby, yet another Pixar character not from The Incredibles. This time, it's Merida from Brave. I know this is probably a strange thing to note, but her Pixar build location is probably my favorite out of them all, at least in terms of location. 
The Pixar build for Merida is the Witch's Hut, a uh, place, whatever it's called, and it's located at the center of this hedge maze in City Park. I just find it interesting, I guess. Anyway, Merida has two abilities. The first is, give you a second to guess. Three, two, one. Agility! Wow, no way! So many different abilities being featured in this part. But what about the other one? Well, if you seem brave, it'll come as no surprise to find that she has sharpshoot with, with her bow. Merida's sharpshoot is probably one of the best in the game. Her arrow is really speedy. Like, w even faster than the pistols of the police officer in the Nomanasan Island Guard, which is ironic. I mean, maybe it's not fast. It just it probably just feels faster, but, but how I feel is what truly matters. Non-Incredibles Pixar characters back to back while we're really plowing through them. This time, it's a character from probably the most successful Pixar property, Toy Story. There's a snake in his boot, and it's Woody. Wow. I bet there was some arguing in the dev team about, as to whether to include Woody or Buzz Lightyear for, for the Toy Story rep, but Woody was definitely the better choice. I feel like if TT Games pursued DLC for this game, as they should have, uh, a Toy Story DLC pack would have definitely been like the first thing they would have done aside from the vacation pack which we got so much lost potential anyway woody has two abilities and neither of them are agility woody has the grapple ability which he uses his back string for which is kind of clever and the other ability is a nice way to include a second toy story character in case you don't remember the column ability brings in a vehicle or an animal to ride on so the person can move faster Woody calls in his trusty steed Bullseye, which is very neat. I would not be opposed to a LEGO Toy Story game, though I hope they put more effort into it than they did with LEGO Incredibles. Also, I'd be curious to see how they adapt it and handle the open world, because, I mean, the toys are a lot smaller, and the scaling is all over the place. I don't know. Here we are, another goon to add to the roster. Truly magnificent. In all fairness though, I respect that the goons in this game are distinguishable from each other. Like they don't have the same face and hat, but just with a different colored shirt. Also, they have actual abilities instead of just like a lame gun. The Brain Freezer goon is uh, a goon of, of a Brain Freezer, which, uh, which is a character we'll get to eventually. The main thing to note about the Brain Freezer goon is the explosive ability they have get it because they have an ability it's, it's literally called the explosive forget it this goon throws explosive ice cream at people yeah and the second ability the brain freezer goon has is sharpshoot which is also a reference is also alluding to the the exploding ice cream this is the first of two brain freezer minions on the list and the other one is way cooler but that's just me you know hyping it up let's move on to a very different character By very different, I meant a character who is exactly the same, just a goon for a different villain. The Bomb Voyage goon has the same exact situation as the Brain Freezer goon. It has the explosive ability, as it should, considering Bomb is in his boss's name. Also, the Sharpshoot ability, which is just him being able to aim his bombs at people. My reasoning for ranking the Bomb Voyage goon over the Brain Freezer goon is very simple. Bomb Voyage is an actual character in the Incredibles universe. Sure, he didn't have goons per se, but at least he was in an Incredibles movie, right? Brain Freezer was made up for this game as a throwaway crime wave boss. You fight Brain Freezer goons in the crime wave only. The Bon Voyage goons, you, you fight them in a, in a crime wave and the Golden Years level, where you play as Golden Age, Mr. Incredible, and Buddy. I, I think I've made my point here. What's this, the first member of the Incredibles on this list? A very primitive version of one, and not one anyone would ever use, but here he is. It's the minifigure, Mr. Incredible. If you haven't noticed, the Mr. Incredible in this game is a, he's a beefy fellow. I mean, you know, he's a thick boy. That torso isn't even a real Lego piece, I would know. But this here is the version of Mr. Incredible that's based on the official Lego figure of him, featured in one of the three Incredibles 2 LEGO sets, with the regular torso. 
With the regular torso, he sacrifices an integral ability exclusive to all other Mr. Incredibles, but we'll get to that. Besides that very important ability that he now lacks, there are two other abilities. The first one is obvious, which is super strength. He can pull orange handles and break glowing walls. The other one is a derivative of the strength ability, and I'm surprised it's not just plopped in as part of the strength ability. It's called Bulldoze. It's a rare ability only a few have. Basically, it works like this. If a character with Bulldoze is running, they can just break through an object instead of having to stop and like punch it to break it. This also applies to enemies and glowing walls. It's pretty handy if you're trying to get through enemies uh, or the level fast. Here we have the true villain of Incredibles 2, and also the reason why it was not as good as the first movie, Evelyn Dever. First off, I think they did a pretty good job with translating her to Lego form. I know I knocked this game for how Rick Dicker and Mirage looked, uh, and they looked, you know, nothing like the movie counterparts, but here, they did okay. Anyway, Evelyn Dever here has two abilities in this game. The first, the one we've seen before, and also comes as no surprise, is the hacker ability. I mean, her whole thing is that she hacked her way to the top, kind of. Um, and she also was the sibling of a, of a successful businessman. But the other ability is something we haven't seen before, and also an ability not new to LEGO games, and in fact was seen first in Indi LEGO Indiana Jones. It's the Repair ability. The Repair ability has changed a little bit since LEGO Indiana Jones, though. Back in LEGO Indiana Jones, the repairable objects were broken machines ejecting smoke. In most LEGO games, with the Repair ability since then, Repairable machines are a lot easier to detect, including LEGO Incredibles. Now repairable uh, machines have like this pulsating blue uh, on them, so if you get someone like Evelyn Endeavor to fix it, you're good to go. It's Wally time, ladies and gentlemen. Yet another Pixar build character that we are covering. Wally's placement in the open world is very fitting, I'd say, uh, probably one, one of the best in the game. Uh, his Pixar build is the by and large transportation truck and it's plopped right in a dirt field in the industrial district. To unlock the red brick for this Pixar build, you have to use one of Wally's abilities. Oh, but what are these two abilities, one of which we have not covered yet in the series, you, you are asking, right? With good reason. Well, to get the red brick, you'll have to use the laser ability that Wally possesses. The, you know, and the laser is like the thing that he uses to cut scrap metal in the movie. The red brick is a 10 times stud, so it's definitely worth the trouble. His other ability new to the series is dig. Basically, you see patches of dirt on the ground, and those with the dig ability, such as Wally, can uh, uh, dig, they can dig, they can dig it. Uh, the, they can dig the patches of dirt to reveal a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a revelation. Let's go with that. Ah yes, this little weirdo. You probably remember this guy if you've seen Incredibles 2. He's one of the several supers that was a part of Winston Dever's comeback gang, as I call them, who just fell victim to the brainwashing of Evelyn Dever. Screech here has two abilities. Both are clear and plain to see. First, his wings give him the ability of flight, so with him you can get around the open world a lot faster. Second, his name is literally Screech, which according to Google means to give a loud, harsh, piercing cry, so I guess it would make sense for him to have the sonar ability too. In the house party level, Screech, along with other supers of the comeback gang, all played a part uh, in trying to prevent the kids from leaving the house, uh, and you have to pretty much deal with every single one of them. Screech in this level basically served as a barrier from you and the door, so you have to complete all the other objectives first. Here is, in my opinion, the best bizarre character in the game. Officially, Lightning McQueen has only one ability, but he basically has two. His official ability is Illuminate, which we all know by now is useless. His second unofficial ability is speed. He is speed after all. Super speed is an ability in this game, but that's exclusive to one character, I'm sure you all know who, and it requires being able to use a large hamster wheel, which Lightning McQueen is too big for, so he's not listed as a super speed character when he most obviously is. Lightning McQueen is practically made for the open world since he is a, a car. 
and uh, I used him for pretty much all of the land races in the open world, and he got all of them done with like ease. I actually enjoy Lightning McQueen's controls, and I don't say that for many characters in this game. Trust me. All in all, a great character to play as in this game, but the reason why he's this low on the list is because he's only useful for the land races and just traveling in the open world in general. It's nice, but not enough to get you up in the top ranks, you know? Another instance where we have two non-Incredibles characters back to back. I'm, I'm gonna preface this segment by saying I haven't seen The Good Dinosaur, okay? I know Spot is kind of the kid from that movie, and he's like a cave boy or something, but that's it. I don't care enough about good dinosaurs to watch the movie. I already know bad dinosaurs are more fun to watch, and the Jurassic Park franchise already exists, you know? So anyway, Spot's Pixar build is an outer municipal, and it's, it's some kind of giant shit I, again i i haven't watched the movie so i'm sure it's spot's hut or something anyway spot is the first character on this list with three abilities that's right and they're only going to go up from here folks however all three of these abilities are ones we've seen first there's agility which we've seen from countless characters already second there's crawl hatch which we've seen from the likes of like miguel and finally there's dig something we've seen from wally all three abilities make sense for spot even with my limited knowledge on the character. I mean, he's a cave boy. So, like, I guess, yeah, it, all of those cave people do, I assume. I mean, I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure. Like, really? A robot? Not even a cool name for him or anything. They simply, they simply just list him as robot in the roster. It astonishes me that this is allowed to happen. What do I know? What do I know? As much as I hate to admit it, the robot has a few abilities, one of which we haven't seen yet. First, let's quickly go over the two abilities the robot has that we have seen. First, Sharpshoot. He shoots electric balls, or, or whatever those are, out of his hands. Second is the Hacker ability, which I guess I can understand. Uh, but the third and new ability is the Electricity ability. Those with the electricity ability emit a stream of electricity that can be used to power these generators and, that, and those make something happen. My official analysis of the robot is that uh, he's stupid. He shouldn't be in the game, but he's pretty useful and I hate him for it. Also, every character has a taunt in which they do a certain action when you tap the action button. Uh, the robot starts like bopping super hard. So, <sighs> okay, I guess I can respect him for that. Everyone loves a good bop. Never interrupt a man when he's bopping. With a little bit of... Yeah. Wow, an ice-related super in the Incredibles universe. I totally bet he won't be overshadowed by another ice-related super anytime soon. Ah, who am I kidding? You can't be overshadowed if no one knows who you are to begin with. Here's another random super whose powers are, well, ice-based. This guy is basically what you'd expect from a super with ice powers. First, he can extinguish fires. Second, he can shoot ice balls with sharpshoot. But the last ability is actually new to the series, and it sucks I have to introduce this ability in this segment as opposed to another, uh, better ice-powered super, and I'm sure you all know who I'm talking about. Anyway, throughout the campaign, there are little ice rocks you can interact with as an ice character. By shooting ice at it, you can construct little ice structures that will help you advance in the level. This is pretty much only used in the levels and not in the open world. Although it's nice Icebreaker can do this, there's a much more iconic character that can do everything Icebreaker can, plus more. Starting part 6 off with a bang, or bam rather, I guess that's the sound that bombs make, bangs are guns. Last time we saw his goon, this time we get to meet his boss, one of the only bad guys in this game that was actually featured in a movie, Bomb Voyage. And let me tell you, for being his inferior, the Bomb Voyage goon doesn't really differ much from Bomb Voyage. Bomb Voyage has 3 abilities, while his goon only has 2. Bon Voyage has both of the abilities his goon has, plus one more. What makes Bon Voyage so great despite his explosive and sharpshoot abilities that the goons also have? Agility. 
Yep, that's it. And Bon Voyage is the boss because he's a tad more flexible and he can do flips and stuff. In this game, Bon Voyage gets away just like in the first Incredibles movie. However, in this game, you get the chance to get him once and for all through a crime wave. In fact, his entire boss fight with Bon Voyage at the end of the crime wave is in this weird like TV filter. It's kind of cool, but also distracting. But, you know, whatever. Bon Voyage is in jail, and that's what matters. Psych Wave here is another random super that was just plopped into the roster to make it look more full. Psych Wave has three abilities, two of which are new to the series, but neither are new to the channel. First, let's get the familiar ability out of the way. Sharpshoot, she shoots mind balls or something. Now here's the exciting part. The first new ability Psych Wave has is mind control. It's something we've seen in LEGO Batman along with several LEGO games since then. Basically, if there's a person behind some wall with a lever or something that you yourself can't get to, someone like Psychwave can take control of them and interact with whatever is in the room. It hasn't changed at all from LEGO Batman. The other ability is Levitate. It's basically just the force in LEGO Star Wars games. You can move stuff with your mind, telekinesis, whatever you want to call it. Psychwave is actually seen in the Golden Years level, just hanging out. Too bad an Omnidroid ended up killing her. That's a darn shame. I remember when this villain was hyped up during the promotion for Incredibles 2 before the movie was released. I can't say I was upset when I saw that the guy in the Screenslaver costume wasn't actually the real Screenslaver, but rather just a brainwashed pizza guy because I expected to be bait and switched somehow, you know, but still lame. The Screenslaver has three abilities and basically just makes him an upgraded Evil Endeavor. Like Evil Endeavor, the Screenslaver has Hacker and Repair, which, I mean, makes sense. The other ability the Screenslaver has is Mind Control, which I introduced in the last segment. I mean, I get that the Screenslaver is able to brainwash people through screens, but how can he mind control people in person, like how he does in level? Like, he's not making them put on glasses. However, I'm, I know they're just trying to make Screenslaver more useful unlike his pizza delivering counterpart from the movie. Brick is another one of the supers of Winston Dever's comeback gang, but this Brick looks absolutely nothing like she does in the movie. But notice the minifigure in parentheses, meaning that there is another variant of Brick. This brick is based on the brick that was in the Lego set called The Great Home Escape. I guess the makers of the set didn't want to make an accurate Lego brick brick from the Incredibles movie, you know what I'm saying, but it would cost more money to produce. But the brick we see right here before you, that this is not even an attempt to be accurate. Anywho, their lack of care for what brick would look like in minifigure form made its way into the game. Brick has both immunity and bulldoze, something that the minifigure Mr. Incredible has. But the minifigure Brick has one more ability, immunity. Those with the immunity ability have gray hearts and are completely immune to damage. This is very helpful for obvious reasons. Anchorman is a villain we have yet to cover, but this guy is his goon, if you can't tell by the name. The Anchorman is one of the Crime Wave villains, so you'll get used to fighting these Anchorman goons and the two Crime Waves that feature Anchorman as a villain. Anyway, the Anchorman goon can be pretty useful. I mean, he outranks Bomb Voyage, and that's a villain that escaped the clutches of Mr. Incredible himself. Anyway, let's get to Anchorman's goon's abilities. Uh, one, he has Dive. As you can see, he has this decaying Davy Jones crew-esque look to him. So you can bet your bottom sand dollar that he can swim fast. Second, he has the explosive ability. This guy throws explosive fish, so he can destroy silver Lego objects. Finally, he has sharpshoot, which is also referring to the explosive fish that you can aim and throw. Not not all bad for for a goon. Yes, Brain Freezer the villain gets two different types of goons, rather than just one like the rest of the Crime Wave villains. 
That's one more goon than Bon Voyage, and he was actually in a movie. I guess it's because Brain Freezer was the first crime wave villain, so she gets special treatment. It goes without saying that Monster Goon is way cooler than the regular goon, because this dude's literally melting ice cream. Personified. He, he's got more and better abilities on top of that. The standard Brain Freezer goon has sharpshoot and explosive. The Monster Goon has neither of those, but the three abilities that he does have our abilities we've already seen. First is agility, of course, but in addition, the Brain Freezer Monster Goon can shoot a beam of ice, much like our beloved Icebreaker from the last part. You know, Icebreaker, the the most popular ice-related super in, in the Incredibles universe. The Brain Freezer Monster Goon can both extinguish fires with it and interact with ice bricks, so that's not bad at all. Here's another super that was defeated by an Omnidroid, and also someone I wouldn't expect you to be aware of. That's okay. He's a super of the golden years, sidekick of another super we have yet to cover. According to the wiki, he had an obsession with maintaining his hair, probably because his powers led to him always messing it up. Apparently he was the first super to be able to defeat an Omnidroid, uh, and of course he was eventually killed by another one. So The fact that he was even able to defeat a single Omnidroid is surprising to me. This guy is in the same category as Zephyr in terms of powers, but this guy was given the ability I suggested Zephyr should have along with the abilities she already has. So yeah, Mecha Burst has Extinguish and Sharpshoot for, ha for having air bending, along with Flight, which what that's what Zephyr should have had. So yeah, Mecha Burst is better by default even though he looks like an edgy Peter Pan. These next two segments are going to be insane time filling for a very simple reason. Storm Aside here is yet another super of the golden years whose power uh, is vapor emission. Basically how that works is that she has to absorb air through her body somehow and then be able to emit it through her hands or something. So how does that translate to this game? The same three abilities Macro Burst has, Extinguish, Flight, and Sharpshoot. I mean, yeah, it makes sense, but to have the same exact three abilities as another super, what's the point of ha both supers being in a community if they aren't unique? Anyway, let's analyze her name real quick. You know, after about 15 seconds of thought, I realized something. So, suicide is killing oneself, right? Patricide is the killing of one's father, from the word pater, meaning father in Latin. Storm aside must mean the killing of a storm, which the super can do, because she can use air to disperse storm clouds. I know, I'm a genius. Let me get this out of the way. Dehydra is a super briefly seen in Incredibles 2 who has the same abilities as Storm Aside and Macro Burst, Extinguish, Flight, and Sharpshoot. Now, Dehydra is a stupid name for the super and her powers. Her power is officially known as Samokinesis. Like, what even? Right? Apparently it's the ability to be able to control sand. I don't know why sand specifically, but that's what it is. How it translates to this game as the abilities she has, confusing to say the least. Honestly, when I first played as her, I thought the orange particles on her hands uh, and like what she shoots was just like really, really polluted orange water. But no, that's supposed to be sand. She's definitely going to be a problem once supers are legal again because she's going to be leaving sand everywhere. I don't like sand. Also, she can pretty much only operate on a beach or a desert anyway. Next, we have one of the most iconic characters from The Incredibles, Edna Mode. But this is the butt ugly variant of her. Here's a little fun fact. This variant is called the Juniors variant. However, out of all physical LEGO Incredibles branded merchandise, this specific Edna Mode minifigure was the only polybag that wasn't branded as Juniors. While all the other LEGO Incredibles sets were Juniors, 4 plus. And no, the LEGO Disney Collectible minifigure series doesn't count since it isn't strictly Incredibles. Anyway, Edna Mode has three abilities. First, look at her height. Okay, crawl hatch makes sense here. Second, Edna is a, what the kids call, a techno demon. 
so she has hacking capabilities. Finally, her most interesting ability, and the one we haven't seen in a while, remote control. Instead of Linguini pulling out Remy, Edna Mode pulls out a little drone to run around. Too bad this variant of her is hideous. Here's the standard variant of Edna Mode. I gotta say, they did a pretty good job at capturing Edna's vibe, even though the same can't be said for most characters in this game. Of course, that's mostly due to the outrageous glasses and hairdo. It goes without saying that this Edna Mode has the same abilities as the Junior's version, which is Crawl Hatch, Hacker, and Remote Control. It's weird though, the Junior's variant of Edna Mode we saw at the end of the last part was the promotional minifigure to this game. If you don't know, a lot of LEGO games have a minifigure uh, that is given to people as a pre-order bonus and sometimes they're cool. Uh, but Junior's Edna Mode was the one for this game and obviously she's not uh, pretty cool. Honestly, that figure would be a deterrent to pre-ordering this game in my opinion. But I guess the Junior's Edna Mode minifigure is an accurate representation of the quality of this game. Here is the last variant of Edna Mode in this game, and it just happens to be my favorite. As always, this Edna Mode has Crawl Hatch, Hacker, and Remote Control. You know, as always. Kimono Edna Mode is my favorite because, well, like, I like the kimono, I guess. It's a special variant of Edna Mode that isn't completely horrid, like the Junior's variant is. I believe if Edna Mode had to be the pre-order bonus minifigure for this game, it should have been the kimono Edna Mode. The regular Edna Mode was already made an official minifigure shortly after this game was released, and the Junior's Edna Mode we got is absolutely disgusting. So by default, Kimono Edna Mode would have been the best choice here. I usually don't bother with the pre-order bonus for LEGO games. If it was a minifigure actually worth my time, I would have gotten it off Bricklink or something. If Kimono Edna Mode was the pre-order bonus, it might have been worth my time. Maybe. Here's yet another super I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't heard of. However, there's quite a bit of lore on him. Anyway, he has three abilities, which basically makes him an advanced Vectress. That being said, he has sonar, obviously. Uh, according to the wiki, he apparently discovered his sonar powers while selling peanuts at a baseball game. I don't want to know how many people he made deaf from that incident. Not much, I hope. In addition to sonar, though, he has his sharpshoot ability, and he can fly. An interesting set of abilities, but to be honest, flight is his most useful one, despite sonar being his main power. In fact, he developed his superhero yodel with his sonar powers, so... That's like his main one, right? Here's another thing of note. Phalangia was a part of a trio called the Thrilling Three. The other two members we haven't covered yet in the list, but another member is going to be covered in this part, so watch out for that. Next, we have the new super that got the most attention in Incredibles 2, Void. How can you hate her? I can't even when she was brainwashed. Void has a new ability we haven't seen yet, and I'm glad to cover it now. But first, let's look at the two abilities we have seen. First, Agility, which comes as no surprise. The next is Sharpshoot, with which she, can, she shoots like blue void balls. Did she use this at all in the movie? I, I, I can't recall, but I want to say no. Anyway, l l let's look at the new ability. Void is known for her uh, making uh, a voids. Void makes voids to, for teleportation. This aspect of her was made like was the basis of this of new ability in the game shared by several characters and it's called teleport. Sometimes you'll see this bulky blue and green square wall thing uh, on a wall and people with teleport like Void can interact with these walls to reach rooms you usually can't with most other characters. It's very obvious the teleport ability was created for Void because this square matches Void's color scheme, even though there is a much more prominent character in The Incredibles that can also use it. Look at this absolute doof right here. I'm sorry, but his design is bad in like a funny way. Like medieval times or future jetpack man, make up your mind, you know? Anyway, Hypershock is a super known for producing seismic waves, but 
he doesn't have super strength. I, f I feel like if you can cause earthquakes, super strength isn't that much of a stretch. For this game, Hypershock has three abilities. First, to go along with his seismic activity, he has Bulldoze, so he can run over enemies and break through walls. Secondly, he has Flight, which is always a plus for the open world. And finally, he has Sharpshoot, where he shoots... I don't know, seismic balls? I, so his ability combination admittedly is pretty good, with emphasis on the Bulldoze and Flight. Sharpshoot is pretty common, as we all as we all know from what we've seen. Since I have nothing else to talk about, Hypershock was also the third highest rated super in terms of how dangerous they are, according to Operation Kronos. I, to be honest, I doubt that, but you know, whatever. The, Mr. Incredible was apparently number one, so, like, I, I don't really trust the rating system for that. Here's one of the famous supers who died as a result of capes, despite Edna Mode's discretion. You know the classic scene where she was straight up yoinked into a jet turbine? That's her. That, that's, that's Stratagale. But Stratagale here, in terms of this game, is basically an upgraded Hypershock. Stratagale has Bulldoze and Flight, but the sharpshoot ability that Hypershock has is replaced with the Strength ability, which is a trade I would gladly take any day. You know, that's something Hypershock should have had. But yeah, that small change in abilities is more than enough to make a much better character to play as. In terms of the lore, Stratagale is like the Aquaman for birds. That's right, Stratagale can speak to birds, kind of. She can speak to ten specific types of birds, none of which are named in the wiki. I don't know why the people in charge of coming up with Stratagale's backstory were like so specific, but there you go. Plasma Bolt is the weirdest looking super to me. I mean, look at her. She was a member of the Phantasmics, consisting of several supers, Macroburst and Psych Wave being the ones that we've seen in the list so far. As for this game, Plasma Bolt isn't as scary since she's in Lego form. As for her abilities, an obvious one is electricity, so she can interact with those electricity tanks. Second, an easy one is Sharpshoot, where she can shoot electro balls. Finally, another easy one you can get from looking at her. She has flight because of her wings, so there's that. Another interesting tidbit was that she was not documented in Operation Kronos, meaning that she still might be alive. The same can't be said for most of the random supers in the series, which is honestly pretty depressing. Oh, I wonder what this guy can do. His name is leaving with me with so many questions. Thunder, thunder on his head. Oh, an electricity-based super, just like Plasma Bolt. In fact, exactly like Plasma Bolt. Thunderhead has the same exact three abilities as Plasma Bolt. Electricity, Flight, and Sharpshoot. Kind of lame how these guys have the same exact abilities, but I guess it can't be helped. So with that aside, I can just discuss this story in The Incredibles. Like Stratagale, he's one of the supers that is a victim of a cape-related uh, ending, I guess you could say. Thunderhead was a high school dropout, and Mr. Incredible went on the record with saying that Thunderhead isn't the brightest bulb. Also, according to the wiki, Thunderhead adopted five children with his roommate named Scott. I don't know why that's in the wiki, but it must have been documented somewhere. I, I gotta admit, props to the people who came up with these full sto uh, backstories for these supers. If only I cared about them more, you know? Thank God for the Pixar wiki because I'm using a whole bunch for these supers that were for some reason giving these entire backstories. It's almost as if the people at Pixar who came up with these backstories knew a Lego game would be would contain all of these guys and that I'd eventually make a character ranking out of it and that they in 2004 gave these supers a bunch of tidbits of information for me to talk about. Anyway, here's Dynaguy, the third super that has died as a result of a cape malfunction. Dynaguy was another part of the Thrilling Three before he was replaced after his death. His three abilities in this game is Flight, for one. The second ability is Sharpshoot, where he shoots fireballs. And finally, he has Laser. Much like Reflex, except he emits a laser out of his hands rather than his vomit. According to the wiki, though, Dynaguy shoots the rays out of his forehead. But in this game, it's through his hands. TT Games, this is a criminal error, and it would have been a averted if I was involved with the development in any way.
Well, it's a member of the Incredible family. The second one after the minifigure, Mr. Incredible, if you if he even counts. Anyway, here's Dash, a fan favorite of the Incredibles films. Dash has three abilities in this game, and would you look at that, Dash has three variants. I'll just cover one for each segment, so I at least have a little something to talk about for each segment before I'd have to start, you know, talking about whatever. But here's the Dash Par variant. Basically, this is just Dash in regular clothing. I'm not going to say it's the worst Dash, since they all do the same thing, but casual Dash Par is not as interesting to look at when you play him. Sue me. Anyway, the first three of the abilities that Dash Par has is agility. You know it, you love it, it comes as no surprise because everyone has it, apparently. Dash is a fast, small, and nimble little boy. I'd honestly be shocked if he didn't have agility considering some of the other random characters in this game that have it. Here's the second of the three dashes in the roster, and this is also the first DLC character we are covering. We're over halfway through the list, and it's a little weird we're just now encountering a DLC character. Well, there is only one DLC pack consisting of six characters, and all are just the main Incredibles family in their vacation wear. This is Dash in his vacation wear. As you can see, his vacation clothing consists of a yellow tank top and red shorts. I put this Dash par above the regular Dash par because, well, I paid an extra $2 for this character, if I want the full extent of my money's worth, I want to play as this guy the most. Well, since it was two dollars for six characters, Vacation Dash Par is worth approximately thirty-three cents, and I also have a rule of a dollar an hour for DLC. Basically, if a DLC costs say five dollars, if I think I could get five hours of playtime out of that DLC, I'd consider it worth buying. If Vacation Dash Par is worth thirty-three cents, that equates to 20 minutes of playtime, and I definitely made that quota, so that's nice. Also, I said I would cover uh, ab an ability of dash for each variant, and last time I covered agility, this one is an obvious one, Crawl Hatch, he's a small boy, so this isn't surprising at all. It's interesting how that, since the children of the Incredibles family don't have official superhero names like Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl, their Incredible Suit variant is just their first name, while their Casual Clothing variant is their first AND last name. That's interesting, yeah. Anyway, I chose the Incredibles Dash as the best variant because the In Incredibles outfit is iconic. I love the design of it, and Cena in Lego form is pretty cool. But now it's time for the final ability Dash has, which is exclusive to him. That's right, it's what he's known for. Speed. Now, Lightning McQueen is also speed, but he can just go fast. Dash can do so much more than just go fast. There are several types of machines that only Dash can interact with. The most common is this red hamster wheel with which Dash can interact with to make things happen. There are also these little podiums that Dash can use to run a little trail and, and make more things happen. Also, the same podiums can be found in the open world, and Dash can run around buildings and stuff using it. And to put the cherry on top, Dash can run on water. My only thing about Dash is races. While yes, he goes fast, and you know, that makes him great for races, he gets a bit fidgety with turns. I'll always use Lightning McQueen as the go-to for open world races, but Dash will always be close to my heart. Wow, from one incredible family member right into the next. That's right, the head of the household himself is pretty low on the list considering everything. I mean, Bob Parr is the main character, you'd, you'd expect him to be higher. In reality, Bob Parr ha and his seven variants, not including the minifigure variant we've already seen a few parts ago, so with the seven variants, he'll be taking up most of the rest of this part. All Bob Parrs in the next seven segments have the same three abilities. Get used to this face, but I can't do the same as I did with Dash, where I can cover one ability each segment. Well, I, I will do that, but Bob Hart only has three abilities, so I can only do that for three of the seven segments. I won't cover an ability now uh, in this one, because I'm already pretty deep into the segment, so, you know, this is just more of like pre prefacing what you're about to uh, see. Speaking of this segment, it's the workout Bob Parr. This is the outfit worn when he was lifting trains and stuff in preparation for Operation Kronos. This is the worst variant in my opinion because his outfit here is just so boring. It's just all black shorts and a tank top.
Here's the standard variant of Bob Parr, you know, the one that doesn't have anything in parentheses after his name. This variant is taken after the disgruntled Bob Parr that worked in a cubicle after the time jump from the glory days, when supers were made illegal. His undone tie here is a, is a nice touch. It's a lot more appealing than the workout Bob Parr since there was at least a little bit of effort in his design. But let's cover one of the three abilities Bob Parr has. This first one is the obvious one here, Strength. You, you all know Strength, the, an ability that debuted in the light, first LEGO Batman game. There are those orange handles and people like Bob Parr, a guy who is known for his swollenness, can use them to forcefully rip open something. So this is one of the most obvious abilities to give Bob Parr, so I thought I'd cover it first, so that the more important abilities are saved for later, for suspense. This right here is the pajamas variant of Bob Parr. You see him wearing this in Incredibles 2 when he's a stay-at-home dad while Elastigirl was out being epic. First off, why do they spell pajamas with a Y instead of an A? TT Games has done this before in Lego Indiana Jones 2, so what's the deal? It looks like a sin when pajamas is spelled with a Y. Just spell it with an A. It's just not that big of a deal. Anyway, pajamas Bob Parr is above the others for the same reason why the regular Bob Parr was above the workout Bob Parr. There was clearly more effort put into this design. However, the stripes on the torso don't extend to the legs like they should, but you can't win every battle, I suppose. I guess we can talk about Bob Parr's second ability, Bulldoze. We've covered Bulldoze before, where a character with it can just barge into enemies and make them go flying, despite not actually fighting them. Bulldoze characters can also crash through cracked walls to avoid that long animatic where the character has to like wind up their strike to tear down the cracked wall. With Bulldoze you can just pummel right through them. It's a pretty nice ability and it's good that the main character has it. The Vigilante Bob Parr looks like an actual clown. I don't know why but the that big swole body of his, having that tiny regular minifigure head with the stud on top is just really funny to look at. I think the stud pulls the whole look together to be honest. That's why Vigilante Bob Parr is higher than the rest we've seen so far. Just it's just because he looks pretty freaking dumb. I mean, the blue ski mask with the black suit, talk about a clash. Anyway, let's discuss the third and final ability that all Mr. Incredibles have. While well, okay, not Mr. Minifigure Mr. Incredible. Remember in that Minifigure Mr. Incredible segment when I said that the Minifigure variant has is lacking a very important ability that all other Mr. Incredibles and Bob Pars have? That's the ability I'm about to talk about. This cool new ability is called Incredible. Yep, that's it. Just Incredible. In pretty much every level you play as Mr. Incredible, you'll see this ability at least once to advance in the level. You'll see these red sparks under these huge items and only Mr. Incredibles can lift them and move them. These things are everywhere and it's exclusive to these guys so yeah they're pretty important. So we've covered all three of the Mr. Incredible abilities so these last three segments are going to be major filler so strap in boys. This time around the last Bob Parr before we get into the Mr. Incredibles is the vacation Bob Parr. Just like the Vacation Dash Bar, the Vacation Bob Par was included in the only DLC release for this game, which was just a character pack with Vacation variants of the main characters. And just like Vacation Bob Par, I would have needed to play Vacation Bob Par for a total of 20 minutes to get my money's worth of the character. Did I play 20 minutes of Vacation Bob Par? Probably not to be honest, especially since I don't even have him down as the best of the Mr. Incredibles, but I do like his wine shirt. and. Why is he wearing khaki in a warm climate? TT Games falls short once again by not giving this man some shorts. His legs are probably on fire.
There are five Bob Pars and two Mr. Incredibles, excluding the minifigure Mr. Incredible, of course. All seven of them do the exact same. However, I did make a point to put all of the Mr. Incredibles above the Bob Pars. This should be obvious because the most action-packed things to happen in the Incredibles movies happens when the Incredibles are suited up, so I'm always going to be more in favor of the suited up Incredibles as opposed to their casual variants. Um, sorry, cut this out, <laughs> obviously. This right here is the Golden Age Mr. Incredible. His blue and black color scheme with the red dot for an eye is very nice, very nice indeed. You unlock this variant in the Golden Years level, the first level in the Incredibles campaign. This is one of my more favorite levels in the game, mostly because of the Bomb Voyage boss fight. The boss fight actually wasn't bad, and that contraption that was set up in the bank is very unusual for a bank, mostly. Finally, we've made it through all of the Mr. Incredibles in the list, and after this, we'll never see them again for the rest of the series. It's a little sad, but that's life. Anyway, just like I did for Dash, I'm putting the standard red and black outfit for Mr. Incredible as the best, in, parent in quotation marks, best uh, variant of Mr. Incredible. There's nothing that sets this guy apart in terms of abilities, but the outfit is just so iconic. In fact, I... I said the same thing about Dash, didn't I? Oh, well, I'm too lazy to look up a synonym for iconic. Anyway, people may ask, or maybe I'm trying to stretch for time, but people may ask, if Mr. Incredible is an exclusive ability only to him and his variants, the Incredible ability, may I remind you, why isn't he higher? Well, his lack of abilities is what's holding him back. Quantity really is over quality in this game when it comes to abilities. The trick is to try to not switch characters as much as possible because it can be tedious to switch between characters, and sometimes they just take a while to load. Unfortunately, in free play, you'll find yourself switching to Mr. Incredible anyway because of his exclusive ability and how often you see it. This part has been pretty bare in terms of the characters covered. In this part, we've only seen Dash, Mr. Incredible, and now this guy who isn't even from Incredibles. That's right, this is Russell, the UP representative in this game. The Pixar build for this game is Carl's Colorful House that is featured in Up, and it's in the middle of a construction zone in the Financial District, which is just like in the movie uh, before Carl yeeted out of there with his entire house. But alas, it's not Carl we see in this game, it's Russell. At first I was a little confused, but I agree with Russell being the better character to be featured in this game. This is also the first character in the list with four abilities. The first ability is Carl Hatch, obviously since he's a boy. The next ability is fire, where he can interact with these bundles of wood to create a fire, where there's a fire icon. I can only recall using it once in the entire game, and that was in the camp in Outer Municiburg. Russell's third ability is tracking, which is yet another new ability to the series, but not new to LEGO games at all. If you see a floating magnifying glass above the ground, a character with tracking, like Russell, can follow a scent and then dig up where wherever it leads to. Finally, the coolest thing about Russell is that he has the call-in ability. Who does he call in? Kevin. It's so cool to ride a Lego Kevin, even if he can't jump as high as he, he should be able to. Russell has a wide range of abilities, and he's always in your party when you play free play. Starting off part 9, wow, we've come a long way, we have another goon, and again, they are nothing like the Goon Brothers. Uh, this is the Underminer Goon, another villain that escaped the clutches of the Incredibles. You fight a ton of these dudes in the first level of this game that takes place on Underminer's drill. Uh, also, is it just me that it's weird that they start with Incredibles 2 for the campaign, and then you go back to one? That's weird. Like, I know Incredibles 2 came out at the same time, but like, that's stupid. Am I wrong? With that? I don't know. Anyway, the Underminer Goon has several abilities, despite being uh, just a goon. However, a lot of these abilities are rendered kind of null. First is Illuminate, which makes sense because he's a miner, and he has those hard hats with the lights on them. Doesn't matter, because it's still a useless ability, only ever used, like, twice. The second ability the Underminer Goon possesses is Explosive. He holds one of those classic dynamite pieces to blow stuff up. Naturally, since the Underminer Goon can throw the dynamite, he has Sharpshoot as well. Finally, his fourth ability is Dig. You know, you see mounds of dirt, and characters like this guy can interact with him. Mm -hmm. 
Reject of Mr. Incredible, future supervillain, it's Buddy Pine. We all know who he grows up to be, but for now, let's accept his innocent nature. Buddy Pine, along with a lot of the characters at this point in the list, have four abilities that pertain to him. First, let's get the easy ones out of the way. Well, he's a bit short and young, so Crawl Hatch makes sense here. Also, he is a pretty smart fellow, and we can tell from all the gadgets and his future accomplishments. So, with this in mind, he does have hacker capabilities and repair. Bam, there's three abilities right there. His final ability is a bit useless, uh, but not as useless as uh, Illuminate. But his final ability is Hover. Yeah, this is a bit different from Flight. Hover is just like watered down flight. Yeah, hover can be used to get across small gaps, but you can't travel long distances in the air, nor can you go very high. Again, flight makes this obsolete, but it's nice to see Buddy have this crappy ability exclusive to himself. We covered the goon at the start of the video. His boss shouldn't be too far behind. It's the Underminer. Now, he does escape in the movie, but you take him down in a crime wave in this game, and I don't know if that's canon, but at least in LEGO Incredibles canon, he does get caught. Anyway, the Underminer has four abilities. I mean, all four abilities of this guy are very apparent just by looking at him. Easy one for this guy is Illuminate, based on his Miner hat. He can use Dig because of his, like, his gloves, I guess. He has Crawl Hatch because he's a short man, and finally, the Underminer's new ability, and his last one, exclusive to him and one other character, Burrow. Basically, there's this weird brown opening on the ground, and characters such as the Underminer can use this to enter the cylindrical opening and travel underground through these rock protrusions in the ground. So, doing so usually nets you a collectible or something. So yeah, I feel like the Underminer's treatment in this game was fair. We have yet another character not from The Incredibles, Flick from A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life is Pixar's second feature film, and boy does it show. And I gotta say, in this game, a human-sized ant character is very unsettling. But hey, I'd be lying if I said he wasn't a tad bit useful in this game. He does have four abilities after all. First, the easy one, agility. I didn't realize ants could do epic flips here and there, but I'm glad to see it. A second strange ability Flick has is Sharpshoot. It's the crappy Sharpshoot, though. He throws dirt, ant poop, I don't know, some, something brown. Maybe this brown substance is a reference to something that happened in A Bug's Life, but it's been a long time since I've seen the movie, so I have no idea. The third ability Flick possesses is something we've seen before, Dig. As always, if there's a mound of dirt, Flick can dig it up. And Flick's final ability is Burrow, making him the only other character aside from the Underminer to have this ability. Flick being one of two characters that have a, an ability, period, makes him pretty useful. Here's another super that is part of Winston Devers' comeback gang, Electrix. Get used to this guy because you play him in two levels, which is a lot for Electrix. First in the hover train hijinks level, and then the second half of the revelations level. And then you fight him in the house party level after he was brainwashed by the, the screen slaver. Electrix served as the tag along to Elastigirl, basically. During these levels in the movie, Elastigirl is by herself, but as we all know, LEGO games require at least two characters for co-op play, so that slapped Electrix into these levels. So naturally, he needs to be able to keep up with Elastigirl. That's why Electrix first ability is agility. Yeah, everyone has it, but Electrix especially needs it to be able to follow Elastigirl around on these poles and stuff on these precarious helicopters that are burning down, you know. The next ability is obvious, electricity. He needs to power up energy banks in the levels he shows up in, and it also shows up every once in a while in other levels and the open world. With electricity comes sharpshoot. Finally, probably the most out of place ability Electrix has is hacker. I don't know why exactly, but it's here, so there you go. I'm just going to start this off by saying this. This super should have been water based. I mean, look, Phyronic. It's just the word ironic with the letter F in front of it. The letter F is the cause of the fire-related powers this super possesses. But because of the word ironic in the name, 
water powers would make it ironic. Get it? Got it? Good. Anyway, as I already mentioned, Phyronic has fire powers. Everything you would expect to see is here. He can light campfires like Russell with the fire ability. He can melt golden Lego pieces with his laser ability. Of course, he has sharpshoot with his fireballs. And finally, he can fly. The whole shebang. Uh, while that covers his abilities, time for Incredibles lore. It is unknown if Phyronic survived the super genocide that Syndrome committed through Operation Kronos. Actually, it's unknown if he even participated in Operation Kronos. He was also one of the supers that the Devers' father tried to call on right before his death. Maybe maybe he died because he had a cape. Who knows? Haha. <laughs> Yet another random super you don't know, it's Blaze And I'm happy to report that Blaze has the, ex the exact same abilities as Phyronic, which are Fire, Flight, Laser, and Sharpshoot. That's all there really is to say about her as a, as a character in this game, so let's get into the lore of Blaze The most interesting thing about her is that Frozone at one point uh, in time pursued her as a love interest, but things didn't work out because they were hot and cold. Ha! I'm laughing so hard over here. Apparently she was recruited by the NSA as a super after being arrested. She was watched very closely. I mean, considering her powers, I guess she'd be an arsonist's dream. She can cause a fire out of nowhere and then fly away into the wind. I'm not saying I'm an arsonist, not that you're accusing me, but uh... But no, I'm not an arsonist, why do you ask? <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> I'm not an arsonist. Let's just move on before anyone asks any more questions. Here is Diablo, a super with a name that accurately gives you an idea of what she's all about. In case you don't know, Diablo is also a fire-based super just like Phyronic and Blaze Actually exactly like Phyronic and Blaze Stone. Diablo shares all the same abilities as Phyronic and Blaze Stone right down to the sharpshoot. Yup, Diablo has fire, flight, laser, and sharpshoot. There it is. So we covered Diablo and more like we covered Phyronic and everything about him also applies to Diablo and Blazestone. So let's cover some lore about her. Are, are you kidding me? This is all they this is all they have about her. The first thing they say about her on the wiki is that she's seen in this game. The fact that she was present at the legalization of supers in Incredibles 2, it takes second place as the most important thing about her, I guess. I gotta say, she does not look very flattering in this one picture of her on the wiki. Poor Diablo. She just stayed in Lego form. Whoa, ho, here we go. He's not a member of the Incredible Family, but he might as well be. In case you don't know, Lucius Best is Frozone. Yeah, that, there's that. There are five variants of Frozone, so I'll be doing the same thing I've been doing with both Dash and Mr. Incredible. This time it will be a lot easier, though. Frozone has a total of four abilities, so starting in the next segment, I'll cover one of the four abilities and cover one ability for each remaining Frozone variant. Again, I won't cover an ability in this segment because I'm already too deep into it, but let's just discuss the outfit we see Lucius Best wearing. This is the workout Lucius Best, and this is this is the worst variant, not because of the outfit. In fact, I like the red tracksuit, but it's more because of the association with the workout Bob Parr. Remember that guy? The laziest design ever. Just black clothing with Bog Parr's big old head. Just the fact that this Lucius Best worked out with a guy that has so little fashion sense is disgraceful. This is the Lucius Best that wore the ski mask to help people in a burning building in the first Incredibles movie. Again, by association, I gotta rank Vigilante Lucius Best over the workout Lucius Best. Remember, the Vigilante Bob Parr was hilarious because of his stupid tiny stud head along with his gargantuan body. Lucius Best was brave enough to stand alongside this funny looking guy so he gets some extra points. Anyway, as promised, let's cover the first ability Lucius Best has. Agility. Sorry, I, I know I hyped it up a lot, uh, only to reveal an ability half the tri-state area already has, but I mean, he's got to be agile if he manages to stay on that ice slide in the air without falling off and dying. I also just made this observation. A lot of characters with agility have it because those with flight can just fly past all the agility obstacles. 
Man flyers need to catch up somehow. Here's the standard variant of Lucius Best, how he usually is dressed when he's not super -reen. Actually, this is just his vigilante variant without the mask. Not really doing it great with the keeping your identity secret if you want to wear the exact same thing just without the mask, but that's just me, I guess. Anyway, what is the special ability being featured in this segment? Sorry to disappoint, again with the pointless hype, but it's sharpshoot. I mean, of course, Frozone can shoot balls of ice from his hands, but there's that, and now it's time for some filler. One of the most classic scenes from The Incredibles is the where's my super suit scene and we all know it and we all love it. That being said, why isn't Frozone's wife a playable character? I know we've never seen her, but she plays an integral role in one of the best scenes in the first movie. Surely they can find a way. I mean, considering th they have old lady but they can't get Mrs. Frozone. Just make up a look for her, I don't know. I, I know we never see her, but just... She's just a girl, right? Just make up a look and give her agility as an ability, and there you go. This one is the Vacation Lucius Best, the variant that you get in the Vacation Pack DLC. Again, the reason why the DLC variant is higher than the others so far is because I had to pay extra for this dude. I want to make myself believe he's extra good, even though he's the exact same as all other variants. The third ability Frozone possesses is Ice, and this is his signature thing. I was thinking about saving his signature ability for last, but I just couldn't help myself. I slightly covered the Ice ability with Icebreaker, but Frozone has a little bit extra. Of course, he can interact with Ice Blocks, and you do it in a lot of levels. But Frozone has a little something exclusive to him through the Ice ability. If you double jump and hold the button, Frozone creates that slide thing, that ice slide thing that he does so he can last in the air longer. It's essentially the glide ability from Lego Batman. It's actually pretty fun to go to a high building in the open world and just free slide down to the ground. You can last in the air for minutes if you manage to figure out how to quickly jump from the ice slide and continue the ice slide from a slightly higher elevation. You all should have expected this based on how I handled the ranking of the other characters with multiple variants, but the character's signature outfit will always reign supreme. This especially applies to Frozone because his super suit is hella cool. The fourth and final ability Frozone has is pretty much common sense. Ice-based powers allow for spectacular things like making fires stop. Yeah, it's extinguish. Of course, there are many fires around the open world that need to be put out. In fact, a lot of crime wave missions require you to put out a lot of fires. And another thing to note is the Vigilant Vigilantes level, which is when Mr. Incredible and Frozone save people from the burning building. In that level, there was this stupid gimmick where Frozone couldn't use his ice powers unless he drank from various water coolers throughout the level. I'm glad it was only in that level because it was really stupid and a waste of time. Like this whole gimmick because of that one scene where Frozone drank some water to freeze that cop? Lame. Next up we have the first crime wave villain that appears in the game, Brain Freezer. Remember all that time ago with Sally Sunday and how her sister went missing after messing with experimental ice cream or something? I, I honestly couldn't remember and don't care enough to make sure that's what happened but it's something like that and uh, that Sally Sunday sister turned into Brain Freezer. Brain Freezer has four abilities. First let's get the obvious one out of the way. Since she's all about ice cream it makes sense that she has the ice ability and because of the ice, she can also extinguish fires. Thirdly, she has the explosive ability for some reason. Like, I know goons have the ice cream bombs, but I guess she does too for some reason. And since she can aim and throw ice cream bombs, she has sharpshoot. Boom, I just speed ran through all of her abilities. And now I have nothing to talk about uh, regarding her, so we're just going to move on. Yep, one of Mr. Incredible's good friends that was killed as a result of Operation Kronos. Actually, in this game, Gazer Beam lived on and was a playable character in one of the story levels. I get why, because LEGO games need that co-op play, and Mr. Incredible is alone when he discovers the true intentions of Operation Kronos. I mean, there was a scene of Gazer Beam's corpse, uh, but here he's just fine in a cave somewhere with amnesia. Anyway, he's pretty useful and is who you used more in the Return to No Man Island level. 
more than Mr. Incredible and he was actually there. Gazer Beam has four abilities as usual at this point in the list. First, he has agility. This one, I doubt for some reason, but he has it. Second, he has the hacker ability. He has sharpshoot as well. Finally, the main thing about him, he's basically Cyclops from X-Men, so the laser ability of his is a given. So yeah, he should be dead, but instead he's a pretty solid character. While Firebreak was the first character I obtained with the flight ability, Splashdown is the first character I obtained that had flight along with other abilities, and I gotta say, this dude does wonders for an all-around just good character. While he only has four abilities, these abilities are ones that are definitely useful in the open world specifically. Of course, as I just said, he can fly, which is always good. Secondly, look at his name, Splashdown. No surprise here that he has water-based powers. He has Extinguish with his ability to conjure up water and just shoot it. This is especially useful in crime waves, where some missions have you traveling to the tops of buildings to put out fires. Splashdown's extinguish and flight abilities make him perfect for the scenario. Thirdly, he can shoot water balls with sharpshoot. And finally, Splashdown has the dive ability so he can also travel fast underwater. He's pretty much the perfect character for the open world since he can pretty much cover all terrain, and by all terrain I mean air and water, but not land, but you know. Lightning McQueen's got that front covered. Wow, I just realized we're in the top 24 characters, and I'm proud yet also a little sad to say this is the last Pixar build character. Yup, there's no more characters after this that aren't from Incredibles. I wish there were more that were this high in the list, but uh, I mean, to be honest, they just kind of suck. But this one's pretty fun to play regardless. It's Sully from Monsters Inc. The Pixar build is the tiny version of the factory the majority of Monsters Inc. takes place in. Sully's a big fellow, so he has several abilities that a lot of these big boys have. His stature is pretty similar to that of Mr. Incredible, so it only makes sense that he has super strength. And along with the strength ability, he also has bulldoze, so he can charge through walls. His third ability aligns with his job in Monsters Inc., where he scares children for energy. With his roar, he has the sonar ability. So, yup. Finally, there's one more ability Sully has, and it's new to the series. Yep, this far into the list, and there are still new abilities, and there's still a few more after this that we haven't covered. Sully has hyper jump. Basically, it works like this: hold down the jump button, let go, and the character goes flying into the air. It's the alternative for flying for big boys like Sully. It's actually pretty fun to use, but it's hard to accurately get from point A to point B with it. When you're in the air, the camera is like distorted, so it looks like you're zooming through the air. Nevertheless, Sully is a pretty cool character and obviously was treated the best out of all Pixar build characters. We covered Brick before with the minifigure variant, but here we have the superior big boy version of Brick, or big girl, I guess. This version of Brick is actually pretty accurate to the movie, and I can see why LEGO opted to not make her movie accurate in the set she appeared in. Imagine the money that would have to be spent to mass produce this Brick big fig. Anyway, Brick has four abilities and is actually pretty similar to Sully, just that Sully's least useful ability was traded out for a much more handy one. First off, Brick has super strength, bulldoze, and hyper jump, just like Sully. But instead of sonar, Brick has immunity. Immunity is a, an ability seen so far only with the minifigure Brick. As you may or may not remember, immunity makes the character who possesses it, basically, they can't get damaged by enemies. But with this Brick, pummeling enemies is a whole lot easier than the minifigure version. Brick, This Brick just bodies screen slaver goons. This is Apogee, a super who was unfortunately lost to Operation Kronos. Apogee has four abilities, and all of them are pretty in line with what their wiki says. First off is Flight, which is obvious. I mean, Apogee doesn't even walk, she just floats wherever she goes. Who, who does she think she is? Watto? Better make it a Force-sensitive Watto, because she also has Levitate, which is basically just the Force, just in this game. And that's pretty much it for what she has in common with Watto. Moving on. She has Sharpshoot. Yep, just Sharpshoot. I mean, there's not much to say at this point about it. Finally, Apogee ha possesses a new ability we haven't yet seen. 
this new ability is called Super Destroying. It's basically just malicious levitate. It's like one of those abilities that was specifically tailored for another character that we haven't seen yet. And Apogee just happened to also qualify for it, so she has it. Basically, those with Super Destroy can just crush certain things. That And really, that's it. Are you kidding me? Okay, so... Okay. I'm just gonna have to freaking... I looked up how to pronounce it, and the guy, even the guy, he was like, I don't know how to pronounce this. So I'm just gonna just say it the way I'm gonna say it, and just hope it's for the best. <laughs> Put that, I don't care what you do with that information. You know how I said Super Destroy was specifically tailored for one character? Crush Hour is that character. Like, his whole entire thing is that he crushes stuff. How is he not a villain? Like, he must have accidentally killed someone, if not multiple people, in his life because of this power. Anyway, ad in addition to Super Destroy, Crush Hour has three other abilities, and they're all exactly what you would expect. This dude is strong, so he has Super Strength, and with Strength, Bulldoze is usually a given. Finally, Crush Hour has Immunity, which is a welcome surprise, but again, his power is just kinda stupid. According to him, he can't uncrush, and that's a big problem to me and to most people probably. Another thing that perplexed me about Crush Hour in this game is how he's just a minifigure. I think he's big enough to at least be given a chunky torso, just like what they did to Mr. Incredible. He just feels like a bit scrawnier than he should be. Only two parts left after this long, arduous series, and we're starting with the one and only Meta Man. We're at the point in the list where I consider all of these characters to be like acceptable mains. It's weird to me that a person can have a main in a LEGO game, but superhero LEGO games in particular, it works. Meta Man here would be a good main despite just having four abilities. Three of his four abilities he shares with Crush Hour, those three being Bulldoze, Immunity, and Strength. However, instead of the Super Destroy that Crush Hour has, Meta Man has Flight. This is a welcome exchange for me. Super Destroy is rarely used ever in the game, especially since Crush Hour has a very limited role in Incredibles 2 to begin with. Flight is something I'd much rather have because it's useful in so many situations. So yeah, Meta Man is a nice character to play as, just a standard flight character that is immune to enemy attacks. We have officially bumped up a tier starting with this guy, Gamma Jack. Gone are the days of four abilities, characters will have at least five abilities each from here on to number one. Gamma Jack is a radiation based super as you can probably tell by the Gamma in his name. According to the Operation Kronos database, Gamma Jack has a threat level of 7.9, the second highest. The only super higher than him in terms of threat level is Mr. Incredible whose rating is 9.1. I think that's stupid. I mean, Gamma Jack can just hit him with a UV ray from a mile away and give Mr. Incredible skin cancer. The only thing Mr. Incredible has is super strength. There are probably a lot more supers that can beat Mr. Incredible in a fight, not just Gamma Jack. Anyway, like I said, Gamma Jack has five abilities, all of which we've seen before, but having a lot of abilities is good. Quantity over quality when it comes to this game. The most useless of, the, of his abilities is Illuminate. Thought we'd be done with that ability by now, but I'm glad to say it's the last time we'll see a character possess the Illuminate ability. Next, he has the fire ability, so he can burn campfires and walk through fires and whatnot. He has the laser ability for golden Lego pieces, and he can shoot radiation balls with sharpshoot. And to put the cherry on top, he has flight. All around a really good character, and one that can totally beat Mr. Incredible in a fight. Get a load of this guy. He looks like a slightly chonkier, rotting Mr. Incredible, and you know what? That's essentially what he is. This dude is a crime wave villain, and his whole thing is that he used to be an anchorman for a local news station and then became a literal anchor man. He wields an anchor for bejeebus sakes, but he has five abilities and I'll be damned if he wasn't a fun character to play as. Not only do you get to massacre enemies with an anchor, but you have a variety of other things at your disposal. First, because of his big boy nature, he has what you would expect, which is bulldoze and super strength. Also seen twice before, Anchorman has Hyper Jump. Finally, his last two abilities have to do with his environment of choice. I don't know how, but he can shoot water out of the palms of his hands, and because of that, he has the Extinguish ability. Since he is an overgrown, swole sea urchin, 
he can zoom around in water with the dive ability. Overall, a pretty cool character. Everseer is another super of the Golden Age that was killed through Operation Kronos. While he does have some cool powers, I can see how he was killed. Everseer is a super who is mostly mind control based. However, Omnidroids don't have minds to control, so he was probably yoinked out of life in a jiffy. Everseer has 5 abilities, so let's go through them. As I've said, he has mind related powers, so yeah, he has mind control. He also has Levitate, which is this game's equivalent of the Force. And then there's the murder inducing version of Levitate, which is super destroyed. He also has Sharpshoot. And finally, he can fly. There it is, all five abilities. Flight, Levitate, Mind Control, Sharpshoot, and Super Destroy. Everseer is basically just a screen slaver on steroids. This is the third member of the Incredibles family we're encountering, and there's only 16 slots left on the list. Really goes to show how essential the Incredibles are in a, in a LEGO Incredibles game. Anywho, here's Violet, and she only has three variants in the game, much like Dash, but unlike Dash, she has five abilities as opposed to his three. The first of three variants we're covering is the Violet Power Casual variant, where she's only in regular clothing. I like how they gave her bangs that partially cover her face, and, but she's still not in super mode, you know? I'm going to do the same thing as I did earlier with other characters, with multiple variants, and cover a select amount of abilities per variant. I'm going to cover only one this time, and it's one of her more surprising abilities. Violet has Dive. Yeah, I know. She can use her psionic power to create a bubble around her, and then she can go underwater with it. It's a little risky of Violet to do that since she only has a small amount of oxygen in that tiny bubble, but it's an interesting addition nonetheless. This is the variant included in the Vacation Pack DLC. There's really nothing to say about her appearance here. I think I think her Vacation Outfit is the most boring out of the Vacation Outfits of all the Incredibles. To be fair though, the Vacation Pack DLC is pretty boring anyway. Anyway, let's cover two more abilities out of the five that Violet possesses. The first is the Hacker ability. Yep, Violet is a hacker somehow. Violet having the Dive ability was weird, but at least it was justified. I don't see Violet having the Hacker ability as justified. The second ability we're covering in this segment is the thing she's known for, invisibility. Basically, Violet can become invisible to the environment, which is needed for several puzzles in the game. In other LEGO games, this ability is usually called stealth, but obviously invisibility is Violet's thing, so that's why it's called invisibility in this game. Of course, as is protocol, the Incredible Suit variant will always reign supreme among the many variants of the Incredibles family. But aside from that, I have two more abilities to present that Violet has that I haven't presented yet. The fourth ability Violet has is Sharpshoot. She can shoot purple balls at enemies and objects. Not much to say about that, but that leaves one more ability that Violet has. That ability is, drumroll please, Psionic. That has everything to do with those purple force fields she can create. There are several things to do with the psionic ability. First, she can build transparent purple pieces. If you see sparkling purple pieces on the ground, Violet can collect them while she's in her purple force field. She can then use those pieces to build a structure of some sort, usually a missing track for Dash to, to speed through. Speaking of Dash, there's a special something that Dash and Violet can do together with their powers, and it's used quite a lot. Sometimes you can see a machine that requires high speeds. Violet can create a force field ball and Dash can hop into it. Violet's psionic ability along with Dash's super speed makes for a super fast hamster ball and it can power this machine that requires a uh, high speed. Also, Violet's force field ball can traverse across toxic gunk without harm. So yeah, Violet has 5 abilities but the psionic ability has several extensions that make her even more useful. From one Incredibles girl to the main Incredible Woman herself, Elastigirl. Well, her alter ego, Helen Parr. But this is the boring Helen Parr, the stay-at-home Helen, you know? Like Violet, Helen also has five abilities, but there are five variants of Helen Parr and Elastigirl, so I'll cover one for each variant. How convenient. So how about we get right into it, huh? Uh, what's the awesome first ability that Elastigirl possesses? Really? Ag ag agility. I mean, yeah, I'm not surprised Elastigirl can flip on poles and stuff, but I was expecting more of a climactic start to these 
next five segments. Anyway, Elastigirl is used quite a lot in the story levels. I mean, she was pretty much the spotlight of Incredibles 2 instead of Mr. Incredible, so you do play her a lot in the levels for the second film. So again, this is the vacation variant of an Incredible family member on the Vacation DLC pack. I like the design of this vacation variant mostly because of the flower in her hair. It's a small but nice detail. But of course, Helen Power variants are naturally just not as good as the Elastigirl ones, even if they do have the same exact abilities. Speaking of abilities, let's discuss the second of five abilities that Elastigirl has. This is one of her signature and exclusive abilities, Elastic. You use this ability in an obscene amount of times in the story levels. Need to get up to a higher elevation? Use Elastigirl to stretch up there and you can use her as a means to get up. Need to get across the gap? Elastigirl got you. Need to go into a vent to pull a lever elsewhere? Forget about it. TD Games love plopping this ability literally everywhere. Maybe I should have waited to talk about this one for one of the better variants, but you know, I just couldn't wait. We're done with the Helen Pars. Uh, the last three Elastigirl variants are all Elastigirls, not Helens. So there's that. Anyway, this is the dev tech variant of Elastigirl. In other words, the fancy new suit Winston Dever gave her so she can lead the comeback game. It is a sleek design for sure, but the other two variants not yet covered hit closer to home for me. Of course, it's still way better than the Helen Parr variant. Anyway, the special ability we're covering in this segment is the grapple ability. Again, this is not surprising at all, and you use it a lot in the story levels. Elastigirl just uses her elasticity to stretch her arm to far away lands to grab that notch to pull it. What's really strange is that after the Elastigirl variants, there is no other character with either the grapple or agility ability left in the list. Isn't that so weird? The agility and grapple abilities, those which we have seen countless times, are officially going away after Last Girl. It's a little bittersweet, but you know, also exciting. Here we are, the final part. It's been a long ride and a little sad to finally be done with this uh, lackluster game. Oh, and also, out of these 10 last characters, six of them have the last name of Par. Huh. Anyway, this is the Golden Age Elastigirl, so, I mean, technically, this specific Elastigirl didn't have Par as a last name yet, but she's still the exact same as all the other Elastigirl variants. I like her Golden Age suit, though, and the, the hairdo as well. Continuing on with covering one ability per variant of Elastigirl, the special ability of this segment is Sharpshoot. It's a little weird for Elastigirl, especially since she's the only character where the thing being sharpshooted is returned back to the user. Elastigirl targets and launches her own elastic arm. Again, it's the strangest form of sharpshoot of all the characters on the list, but at least a title like that goes to one of the main characters, right? Here is the last of the Elastigirls, and of course, as it should come as no surprise, the classic red and black incredible suit variant is the best variant. I don't know what it is, but this color scheme design just never gets old to me. Anyway, the last five abilities Elastigirl has is another trademark thing of hers, and it's also the second ability of hers that is exclusive. That ability, my friends, is transform. There are a multitude of ways Elastigirl can transform in this game. For starters, she can transform into a weird bouncing ball thing. I don't even think it serves a purpose anywhere, and honestly, it's a nuisance more than anything because I don't know how many times I accidentally transformed into a bouncy ball. Probably the most interesting thing she can transform into is a boat. A boat that people can ride on. Better yet, as seen in the first Incredibles movie, Dash can push the Elastigirl boat to make it go faster. So, as a recap, Elastigirl's five abilities are Agility, Elastic, Grapple, Sharpshoot, and Transform. So yeah, Elastigirl is definitely a useful character in the game, as she should be. I mean, she's one of the main characters and she made it into the top 10, so she, she must be a good character. Yeah, the next four segments will be covering the final member of the Incredibles family that we haven't yet seen, Jack-Jack. This is his onesie variant, and in my opinion, the most boring. Originally, Jack-Jack and his variants were at the top of the list, 
uh, for a very simple reason. Jack-Jack has seven whole abilities, and that's the most abilities any single character has in the game. However, I decided to bump the Jack-Jacks down because of their speed. Like, yeah, Jack-Jack can do a lot, but he waddles like a baby, and that's because he is a baby. Jack-Jack has a little something special about him, though. If you hold down the button you push to switch characters, four tabs show up. The bottom one goes to the character grid, but the other three shows the different forms of Jack-Jack, of which he has three, one being his regular baby form. We'll get to them in the coming segments, uh, but, you know, we gotta save, we gotta save some, uh, you know, abilities for the other variants of this baby, right? But you know what? I'm feeling generous. I'll cover the first of seven abilities that Jack-Jack possesses, which is Crawl Hatch. He's a tiny baby. Of course he can fit in a little crevice. I mean, he did it for nine months, right? The second of four Jack-Jack variants is one where he's practically naked. Ugh, that can't be great for monetization. Anyway, as is expected, Jack-Jack being in a diaper and only a diaper does not change the fact that he's the same as all other variants of the Jackster. Or Jack-Jackster, sorry. Or Jackster-Jackster? Uh, before this segment, we'll be covering two more abilities that he has. This time, it has to do with one of his forms. His fiery form, that is. That's right, Jack-Jack can flame on and be a tiny mass of fire baby. While in baby torch form, he has two abilities at his disposal. First, his fire body allows him to have the fire ability. Who knew? He can walk through flames, set off campfires, and that's pretty much all you can do with the fire ability. Secondly, he has the laser ability. You should all be familiar with this by now. He can melt down golden Lego pieces. So yeah, his diaper variant may have him close to naked, but it's still better than that ugly onesie. Here's the last character in the Vacation DLC pack that we haven't seen yet in the list, and of course it's Jack-Jack. Even though this Vacation variant just looks like another boring onesie, I paid extra for this guy so he gets a natural bump in the rankings of the Mega Babies. As for this segment though, we're going to cover two more abilities, both of which are available in his regular baby form. The first is Teleport, you know, the ability modeled after Void. Jack-Jack can interact with those blue and green walls as well. In fact, you first use the Teleport ability as Jack-Jack in the Revelations level. I don't know why, but I'd expect to use it with Void first since the ability was designed after her. Anyway, the next ability Jack-Jack has that I'll cover in this segment is the Levitate ability. Once again, the Levitate ability in LEGO Incredibles is just like how the Force works in LEGO Star Wars games, but for Jack-Jack, the levitate ability is used for a lot more than just moving things. Jack-Jack floats himself above water with that levitate ability. He can do parkour with it, and he can climb ladders. It's, while it's technically not the levitate ability, the fact that it's the justification for Jack-Jack being able to do such so much more makes it, I guess, interesting. We're finally in the final five characters of the list. This is the last time we'll see the classic red and black incredible suit, and I'm sad to see it go. Anyway, there are two more abilities Jack-Jack has that we haven't covered yet. First, let's get an easy one out of the way, Multiply. This does exactly what you'd expect, which is create more Jack-Jacks. I don't think there's any practical reason for this ability. I think it's just here because it, it happened in the movie, and that you play as Jack-Jack and a Jack-Jack clone in the Revelations level where you fight the raccoon. Actually, you might be able to fight more efficiently with more Jack-Jacks, but what kind of criminal would try to take on multiple babies? Anyway, the final ability Jack-Jack has is available through his third form, the Monster Jack-Jack. You know, the purple Cretan he can turn into? Well, th that's what this guy is. While in Monster Mode, Jack-Jack's final ability is Bulldoze, so he can tear down cracked walls and stuff. So that's that. Just to recap, Jack-Jack's seven abilities are Crawl Hatch, Laser, Levitate, Multiply, Teleport, Fire, and Bulldoze. Again, he has the most abilities out of any character in the game, but his stupid baby speed is holding him back from being number one. This is the final member of the Incredibles in this list, so uh, let's move on to the superior non-par characters left in the list. Hey, uh, quick editor's note. I know I should have said above par characters. It would have been a good pun, but, you know, the moment's lost. <laughs> Thank you. 
I think this dude was a little indulgent on the name he gave himself, but he is the certified fourth best character in the game, so I guess it isn't entirely unwarranted. Universal Man has five abilities, all of which are pretty useful. Well, most. The least useful one of the bunch is Sharpshoot, which is something we've all come to love, but beyond that, his abilities are pretty good. Well, he's got invisibility, and he's the only character besides Violet who has invisibility. And guess what? Even if he did want to be seen by his enemies, he has immunity as well. They can't even damage him if he allowed them to get a hit. Moving on, he has bulldoze as well, so he can take down cracked walls and knock over enemies. And finally, he flies. You know, he pretty much hits all the bases for a good character. Universal Man was the first super targeted for Operation Chrono, so I guess Syndrome thought to get the Universal guy out of the way. Here's one of the coolest looking supers in the game. It also is one of the supers that they had to create an entire design for. In the Operation Chronos database, the picture that was shown was the same as that of Universal Man's. I don't know what the reason for it is, but the look they made for him is ugly in the best way possible. Tradewind's whole thing is elemental control, and they really did a good job with giving him abilities to represent as many elements as possible. First off, he has Sharpshoot with Wind Balls. Second, with the air element, he can fly, and with the fire element, he has a fire ability so he can walk through fires. But also, screw those fires because he can put them out with the element of water, which is the extinguish ability. Finally, he can zip through the water with the dive. So yeah, he's a master of the elements. I guess that means Tradewind is the avatar? Well, he doesn't have any abilities pertaining to the element of earth, so he should get that squared away. Where's Toph when you need her? Syndrome, one of the undisputed best superhero film villains ever. I've never met a person who didn't enjoy Syndrome in the first Incredibles movie. While he did die in the film, obviously they can't do that in the Lego game. Instead, Syndrome escaped and ended up being the final crime wave boss in the game. Jason Lee, the original voice actor for Syndrome, also came on to do the extra voice lines for the character, and he's one of the only cast members of either Incredibles films to do that. I think the only other cast member that did lines for this game specifically was the kid who played Dash in Incredibles 2, Huck Milner. Don't quote me on that, but all other characters besides Syndrome and Dash had their extra lines recorded by impersonators. Imposters! Anyway, Syndrome has five abilities, which are basically make him an advanced Buddy Pine, which, I mean, makes sense, because he is Buddy Pine. Like Buddy, he has Hacker and Repair. Also, Buddy Pine's Hover evolved into Syndrome's Flight Ability. Syndrome has Sharpshoot, of course, and finally, he has Levitate, something that is no surprise to anyone that has seen the movie. He's frozen so many people with it, it would be dumb for them to not include it. All in all, Syndrome was treated very well in this game, and he definitely is my personal main. However, there is one character who I think is objectively better. Downburst here is the official best characters of LEGO Incredibles. He just has so many abilities that you would not expect. If Mr. Incredibles threat rating is 9.1, Downburst threat rating is 12.7. Okay, well actually it's 6.5 according to Operation Kronos, but there's no way in hell I believe that. Downburst powers are centered around atomic manipulation, and honestly, I wish his outfit was more hype to match his cool powers. First, he can fly and has sharpshoot, which doesn't really have to do with atomic manipulation, but the rest of these powers do. Next up is levitate, where he can lift stuff by moving atoms of the object around or something like that. And he has the repair ability for some reason. Maybe he can rearrange machine parts, but he'd have to have some knowledge of machinery to do it correctly. Next, he has teleport, which makes sense because he can rearrange his own atomic structure to pass through objects. And finally, Downburst has an exclusive ability, even though it's just a wimpier version of immunity, called Regenerate. As the name implies, he's able to regain health after taking damage. Immunity is better, but regaining hearts slowly over time is better than not regenerating at all. So, yeah. Downburst has six seemingly random abilities, and they make him a very useful character to play as. Well, that's every character ranked for LEGO Incredibles. It's been a trip, and expect the supercut very soon. As for future projects, 
uh, if you might remember from my Super Mario Party like update at the end, um, Lego Incredibles was the Lego game that was at the top of the list, so strike that off. But I'm adding another Lego game at the bottom, so it's going to be indie game. That's a one-off. Lego game, which is going to be like 11 parts. Like a game collection, which is also going to be one-off, and then another Lego game after that, which will uh, kind of probably be like three parts. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what, 11 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3, that's like 16 videos that I have planned, um, you know, when I get to those is another story, but until the next one-off video for the indie game, I'll see you boys later.